Welcome into the casual gaming conversation. I'm Connor. That's Nick. We're joined this week by special guest Brady. We're talking about Summer Game Fest games. Our Summer Game Fest preview. We played 20 plus games at Summer Game Fest, so we're going to talk about all of them in depth. A little bit more in depth than the previews that we did on the TikTok, but go check those out if you would like for a shorter form uh, version of this. Uh, but we'll be doing that. Then we're also doing our hot takes, of course. And we're doing a PlayStation 3 draft. The console that we all grew up on. The console that I met Brady and, and developed my relationship mm. playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on. The good old days, dude. PS3 draft is going to be a lot of fun. But how we doing, boys? Nick, how you feeling? I'm riding the lightning, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm coming in hot. I... Uh Thankfully, finally got to go up and uh, visit my my good friend Scott up in uh, South Bend uh, in the Notre Dame campus and everything. So Friday rolled out at five right after getting out of work, drove up, had a great night Friday. Saturday slept until one. Connor had to text Scott to see if I was alive. Yeah, we were I was like, his phone was dead, he, and it's one o'clock, and I haven't heard from him in twenty four hours. Yeah. Nick, if we know one thing about Nick, he loves to talk. Yeah, so he's usually reaching out to me in some capacity, and I was like. The, I had to get your phone number, Scott's phone number from our mother, oh and, my then, gosh. and then call him. Really? And then I also I texted him. Scott's number. I also yeah. texted him on uh, Instagram first, and then yeah. I was like, I don't know if he uses Instagram like that. So then I, I was like, I'll get his phone number from mom. Um, but I, I go, I my phone wasn't dead. There's no service, and I didn't connect oh. to the internet yet, and so it just wasn't working. Um, no service on a college campus. Yeah, literally, my phone like it had the SOS and the, like it would just Weird. would not do it. T-Mobile. Um, is this one of those college campuses that are just like in the middle of? It's oh, it's Notre, Notre, it's Notre Dame. Nowhere. Yeah, yeah it's I, in the I, middle that's of a big school. It, but it's in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Like you, you roll in, you're like, how is there a college here? There, there is nothing around. But uh, have a great time, uh, play some music, and then Saturday uh, night, had, last night, great night. But. Stayed up till 3 a.m. Oh, I was like, I need to be asleep by 1. Wild. And then the conversation was just so good, it, as we do. The you boys put, were buzzing. The boys were buzzing. We're having a great time. And uh, all of a sudden, I get woken up at 7 o'clock by Scott being like, hey, like, you got to get it going and everything. I, I'm like, I don't want to drive so badly. How far was the drive? Uh, like four, it, it took me five hours. Okay. It, uh, yeah, because I had to do a couple stops and get gas and food and everything. But it's like four hours and twenty ish minutes. Stop at Bucky's. Or Bucky's. On I did not stop yeah. at Bucky's. Big, I did, big Bucky's discussion in the Discord happening right now. I did look up when Portillo's opens because there's a couple close by, uh, and it's ten a.m. And I was like, if it was nine a.m., I would sling an Italian beef so down far my goal. You would think nine a.m. would be Portillo's breakfast. They have breakfast. I, I don't no, think they no. do. Okay, but I was gonna. But who's slinging like, Italian beefs at ten a.m.? <laughs> I'm this guy. Yeah, that's wild. I would absolutely. Uh, Love a dog in my throat and everything, oh, so it, it, it would it would be good stuff. Um, but I I <laughs> like right now I'm coming in off of four hours of sleep and then driving five hours. Nice. And so we're about to have a hell of a podcast, and then we are also shooting the bonus one of these, yes. the bonus casual gaming conversation after the fact that will go up Tuesday. So we're podcasting, and then we're shooting the week's worth of content, which this is the first time we've done a week's worth of content. I feel like in forever, we usually yeah. do two weeks, mm-hmm. which is going to be kind of nice to just roll through that, and then we're doing. Totally. The bonus podcast after that. Yeah. So a lot of podcasts, a lot, a lot of podcasting. And I'm coming off of eight of the just most not fun hours of my life of four hours of sleep, wanting to go back to bed and then driving four hours. And now I'm ready to talk about some video games, Connor. Right on. This is the first weekend. And I want to say since we started the channel that I've not played video games and it's yeah, wild. I played so many games this weekend. Brady, how are you doing? Uh, our, our resident daddy on Father's Day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Ow. <laughs> I'm riding the lightning too. I've never heard anybody say that. Did you just come up with so that? So riding the, Ride the lightning is, is so a Metallica album. It's oh, okay. something that yeah, yeah. I've said like a lot on content, like okay. uh, in like 2020, 2021. And someone I did content with was just like, "Hey man, like that's like a weird thing to like. Where, where does that come <laughs> what from?" Does that mean? And, and it I was dangerous. like, "I don't know." Like, but it sounds cool. It does sound and then he's like, cool. "Riding the lightning actually is a term for way back when they used to do the electric chair." That person's <laughs> riding the lightning. Wow, that's what that. That's uh, dark. It, yeah. But uh, for me, Nick's I just reclaiming think, it. I just think punk rock, dude. Punk rock. Metal, What's more metal punk, metal punk rock, rock than uh than the lightning chair? <laughs> the the lightning electric chair. chair. <laughs> no, I'm feeling pretty good. I played two games of Catan. 
took took home the dub on both games yesterday. Both so games. both oh, games. Oh, you said you clowned on them in the first one. I didn't know oh, you won the second yeah, one. clown on yeah. them. The first one was a quick twenty five minute game. Just absolutely That's brutal, honestly, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just everybody up, knew honestly. from the beginning, <laughs> and it was like they they were like somebody got really upset, and they were like, "Do you want to just restart?" And I was like, "We're not restarting. Yeah. I need this. Dude. <laughs> I fucking need this." And then the second game was like an hour and a half, like a. The best game of Catan I've probably ever played, but I right pulled on. it through at the end, and it was it's so nice. It's so nice when that like last turn's coming around, but you know you're about to win. Yeah, you're just no seven. Yeah. Please no seven so right. I have to ditch half my cards. So it felt it felt real good. Uh, Connor, how are you doing? Uh, I'm rock and rolling. I just relaxed this weekend. It was off Friday. Did a couple of lives on on the TikTok, which yeah. was a lot of fun. Spoke to the people. Did you um, do one on uh, Saturday or Sunday? Or like or this morning? So uh, just the one I Friday. did one Friday and Saturday. Oh, nice. I didn't yeah, yeah. know about the one on Saturday. Uh, yep. th those are always a ton of fun. Yep, yep. I uh, played a lot of games. Surprise for you. Played through Alan Wake Night Springs. Oh, oh nice. I know. I, I didn't know. To, I, I didn't know, know, I didn't know this. That. Yeah, Nick asked what I played this weekend. I was like, uh, Pokemon Snap and some <laughs> Valorant and some X Defiant and Stray. I beat Stray this weekend with Laura as well. Night Springs uh, is really good. Yeah. It's it's like a 7.5 out of 10. It's, it, they're little vignettes, and I think they get better and better as they go along, maybe. Episode one follows the waitress yeah. and is really goofy and silly, and they give you so much ammo in this. You are just, and they make all the guns automatic. Oh, you're my just gosh. fucking lighting fools up, dude. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. And then the one you're, when you're playing as Jesse is kind of weak, in my opinion. It's definitely the spookiest of the three. Um, and I didn't exactly love that. And then you're playing as, I think his name is Breaker. Um, the the cop. Yeah. That one is the best one by a lot. It is super creative, super weird, very remedy. I'm like, this is this is what I'm looking for yeah. right here. There's like different like gameplay, like completely different gameplay elements that they add in to that one at the end. I was like, what the fuck is this? How, like, how long did it take you? Three hours. So like oh, forty five okay. minutes a piece, an hour a piece about. Yeah. Um I played the first two the first night and then I played the last one in the morning. Oh, I, I signed me the hell up yeah. for three hours of Alan Wake. Uh, and it's just a fifteen extra dollars, I think twenty it was bucks. Twenty for both of them. Okay. And I just bought the, yeah, the, the deluxe, deluxe expansion edition. or whatever. Yeah. So I just I just ripped that. And that was a lot of fun. Um so played video games this weekend, Pokemon Snap. Uh, Return to Retro review coming soon. Had to drop Secret of Mana. Did you hear about this? No. Uh, the guide I was following, um, I got some momentum back, beat a boss. was like, okay, maybe I'm back in. Uh, guide I was following, I'm um, level 17 right where he is. It says, uh, it does a like, hard cut. And it's like, okay, now uh, grind in this area to level 27. It's like, I'm not doing that. I'm okay. just not doing I'm not spending three hours right now. I'm already trying to get momentum back in this. That will just kill my momentum yeah. completely. I'm not playing that right now. So I picked up something short, picked up Pokemon Snap. I'm about to beat it. I think this game is fucking awesome. <laughs> I fucking, yeah. This game rules. I love Pokemon Snap so much. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I do, but I'm about to beat it or whatever. There's certainly like more nice. to find. You, you want to know something that's really exciting. We have guaranteed... By the way, this isn't just like something that was said. We have a guarantee from one Brady Goodall that he will be Final Fantasy VII remake by the end of this month. And I, if he doesn't, <laughs> getting close. To I get to physically through. hurt him. No, nice. I, I don't know. But that he, was not the deal. It, 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 he was like, "I'll buy you a beer or something." But like, I am saying it to the audience because if he doesn't. Then you guys can give him shit. But if he does, then we can have him back on this podcast to talk about it. It'll yeah, be fun. just step on the gas, Brady. Just, just yeah. force your way through, man. That's the thing. It's like now that I told Nick that I have to do it in like the next two weeks, it, I'm just gonna do it out of spite. You, yeah. gotta, you gotta get your momentum back. That's yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. dude. RPGs like when you stop and start and stop and start, it's so hard to like come back and right. like be like, okay, like let's wade our way back into it. Like, what was I even fucking doing yeah. the last time I was here? So you just got to get them on the But I mean, like you got cool. Animal Well in there. You, oh, yeah. like, you, I, you have Lotro whenever you want to really right. get into that uh, on the Switch. Good to go. Like, you're, you're playing some good other games, but I'm excited for you to get back yeah, to Yeah, I'm it. at, like, the very end of Animal Well. Uh, yeah, so I'm very excited. I'm so excited. It's such a good game. You should. The I, ending is freaky, dude. I, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm not having fun it's with gonna it, be, but it's good. It's, it's going to be in my October, November. I, I need to just rip through things right. that I missed throughout the year. I, I think I've done a pretty good job on hitting all the big hitters that I really want to get to. Bellatro being the prime example of like, mm -hmm. that just like was, that just happened. I definitely played that game during certain meetings that like were just very, <laughs> like, we have like the all company right. meetings that is no one just listens to because they also send out a report that does everything and you just yeah. get financial space, whatever. But that's like a two hour meeting and I'm just like, 
quattro, dude. Are you yeah. kidding quattro. me? Like that that was such a fun time this year. I cannot believe that we're already probably like eight minutes in this podcast when we haven't I've, done hot takes. I've played thirty seven <laughs> games this year. Yeah. Uh, I think I've beaten thirty of them. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, is wild. I've beaten like, twenty five and uh I played thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. I've got my list of all the games I beat. I really need to like just tag under that all the games I've played. Right. Yeah. Like, Cause yeah. I have like X Defiant and Foam Stars on right, it, which I've right. like barely Oh, I, d- I don't even have X Why Defiant not? on my yeah. list. I, I should oh, put yeah. I played like 10 hours of it at this point. Like, 10 hours? Yeah. Jeez. But I, 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 it. Well, I, would go up. And, I would go and finish <laughs> stream at like 10 p.m. and then just rip hop it. on X to find and play an hour or two. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the housekeeping a little bit here. Just uh, a reminder because uh, there's a shocking amount of people that probably listen to this podcast and don't watch our streams and don't watch our other stuff or whatever. So just uh, we got some fun streams coming up for you. Twitch.tv slash co underscore op 64. I'm streaming God of War with the boys on Mondays. Nick is going to be playing some Elden Ring. And we have uh, this Friday, Nick is going to be doing an extra Shadow of the Erd Tree stream on Friday. And then I'm starting up Hollow Knight, I think, on yeah. Wednesdays. I'm, I'm, I'm kind You've of, gone back and forth. I know. I'm between Hollow Knight and the Last of Us Grounded Mode playthrough. Um, I don't know exactly know what I'm feeling right now, but, we'll, but we'll, it might be a game time decision. The last we'll was mode is one of the last promises, content promises that we have from it is the last one we have from Extra Life yeah, last year, which is wild. And so we need to get like uh, we're we're moving certain things around and pushing uh, certain streams further into the year. Like we will eventually do the co-opathon, uh, Resident Evil, we'll Resident Evil playthrough, but like. This needs to happen before Extra Life this year because right. there will be content promises that come from Extra Life this year, which right, is right. just wild that that's coming down the barrel. So, yeah, we'll do uh, those streams. Uh, we stream Monday through Thursday, 7 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Do you know when you're going to be streaming on Friday? I, I think right after work. Okay. I'm going to try to have the set ready so like to go. Like, I, I might. Uh, I'm, I'm ho- Hopefully, I am starting the stream at 5. That is the goal. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, so around uh, 5 Eastern Standard Time for Friday for Shadow of the Earth Tree. Uh, go on that experience with Nick. It's like gonna, you, I'm gonna you play. went on with uh, with his su- subathon for the entire game. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think that I'm playing ten hours. Yeah. I think I'm gonna start <laughs> at five and go till three a.m. Yeah. Hell yeah. I respect dude. it. I I'm so so fucking excited. It's it's ridiculous that like this was not part of my life. It feels like Final Fantasy to some regard. Where it's right. like this wasn't part of my life, and now like I'm obsessed with it and I really enjoy it. Elden Ring wasn't part of my life, and I was like, I know I'm gonna enjoy this, but the amount of times i'm just like it's all i fucking want to do but like i put right. up the ps5 yeah. i see it i'm like fuck dude why can't i play more of elden ring i have thinking, to play other stuff i've been thinking about doing Sekiro lately dude i, I, I need like a modern game one. as yeah. well uh, that, that's the next one i'm playing me. old stuff for return of retro and then I, I want something a little bit modern and i was thinking about doing Sekiro. Well, what did you do Sekiro on stream no okay. i don't want people to clown on me <laughs> 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 I, I, it's, i'm we all know i'm the best game red co-op 64 by like a landslide but <laughs> the, me playing Resident Evil 2 and missing those shots <laughs> at oh the end of that God, game. Dude. Watching him was so hard. I was like, I can't. Like, <laughs> I'm telling him to like, because because the way that it works is like the reticle will like come in if you stand still, and Nick is just moving and just, <laughs> just like all over the place, <laughs> like, turning, ah, burning. Yeah. Like, oh my god! But I beat Resident Evil 2 recently. Though. We yeah. need to do what we've been playing episode. Yeah. I have beaten like, and you have also. Yep. And you even have beaten so many freaking games since the last time we've done one of those. I'm so excited. And people to, really to like those something. episodes. People just like talking about games and, and yeah. being excited about like actual video games and not just the industry as a whole, yeah. which is which I respect. Like I think that's that those are some of my favorite discussions as yeah. well. Um, more housekeeping. Join the Discord if you haven't. That's probably one of our favorite things about this whole channel and everything is growing the community, getting to talk to you guys, see you guys foster relationships and make friends with each other. I know that there's people like in our Discord who like uh, Boomer Scooter and, and Hope just like visited each other yeah. Yeah, in like, real life. Up, it's yeah. like uh, IRL meetups now. Like that's awesome. Like we just love that people are are finding friends to uh, talk to and, and play games with and everything. So join the Discord. There's a link in the uh, TikTok bio or just ask comment and ask us for it and we'll, we'll send you a link if, you, if needed. And do, uh, once you're in there, uh, be sure to fill out like fan submissions for fan voting for top 10 lists, poorly described plots, um, fast monies when they come up. I think we're going to do like a fan survey, like a, yeah. a yearly check-in for like, what can we improve? What do you guys want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? Do you have any ideas for the channel? Like what, what do you want from us? So we'll, that'll be coming out soon as well. So it's a little bit of housekeeping. We also have the Q and a that we're shooting next weekend. And so oh, yeah. we will, uh, send something out for that probably Monday. Uh, is that, when an, this gets is that a bonus episode as well? The, so, uh, that's not a, 
that that doesn't go up on the like podcast feeds and okay. stuff. That's just on YouTube. Oh, but wow. Yeah, it's that we're we have that next week uh, to be our <laughs> so we're double, quarterly double potting as well next yeah. weekend. Interesting. So two two weeks in a row, which right I like. The, we wanted to wait on the Q and A till SJF, be, and honestly, till after we shoot the podcast we're going to post on Tuesday and everything of right. these stories because we assume that there will be a lot of questions about SGF and the showcases and all that. And we wanted to have that cooked for long enough, but that's a quarterly thing in the same way that the podcast we're shooting this afternoon is a right. quarterly thing. It's the end of the fucking quarter. We got to shoot these things again. I'm out there uh, being June. And speaking of showcases, we got to be getting a Nintendo direct soon. Yeah. They said this summer, didn't they say June? They, Did said, they June. say June. Okay. June. So like, it's got to be happening soon or at least they got to announce it. It's either you, this imagine. week or next week. That's <laughs> literally, <laughs> that that is will happen. Factual. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll be reacting to that. I'm sure. So keep an eye out for any details on that as well. But if you want to stay up to date on all of our stuff, we post the announcements in the discord every single week for the stream schedule, for the, the TikTok live schedule, for any, any big updates on that so and if you listen to this podcast we sometimes have to move things around like sgf and everything we also post hey if there's going to be some sort of change we let you know that on those announcements too yep okay right on that is the housekeeping out of the way we're going to get into the hot takes i'm going to kick it off this week i've been stewing on this one for a while my gaming hot take for this week is about counter-strike versus Valorant. I am so <laughs> sick of these conversations, dude. I love Valorant. It is one of my favorite games of all time. I've had some of the best times playing this game in my entire life, and it's so fun and so amazing, but it always is brought down by a Counter-Strike fan being like, you do know that it's worse than Counter-Strike, right? And I look to you and I say, Yes, I do know that it's worse than Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike has history. It has legacy. It's been the big dog for years. And and there's nothing but respect for Counter-Strike. I personally prefer Valorant. It's a preference thing. But I feel like the Valorant community looks at Counter-Strike and is like, yeah, Counter-Strike's fucking awesome. Glad people enjoy it. Counter-Strike community looks at Valorant and is like, these fucking dorks and their e-daters and their and their powers and their overwatch powers and everything it's ridiculous and i'm here sitting here having a ton of fun enjoying the variety that the utility brings and the different agents bring and how many updates there are to uh valorant there's a ton of updates constantly keeping the game fresh whereas counter-strike has really been pretty stale over the last few years we, we just got cs2 but that was really just like mainly a visual upgrade and they changed the smokes and stuff as far as i understand it if there's more changes then let me know but like counter-strike is counter-strike valorant is an ever-evolving growing thing and i love valorant and all i want is to just live in peace and harmony with the counter-strike fans and the counter-strike community they're both awesome they're both great leave me alone i love valorant till the day i die so Some, yeah, something that's... tells me they're not going to leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to put in this part of the hot take. I I'm just going to let yours go up as Get that. Bullied. I do <laughs> I do not want to be part of this conversation. I do. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I'm here for this. <laughs> is better in my mind. Like I've played both of them and the variety that agents bring with the mm-hmm. different utility and being able to change up your kit based off of the character that you're playing is refreshing and is fun and is unique like i know that valorant is a copy of counter-strike but there is things that i think it does better and i i refuse people talk about the community around valorant and how toxic it is i don't think that that should be a knock on valorant itself Mm. like that's not valorant's fault that's just people's fault but i've had some of the most human amazing experiences on valorant that i've ever had with random people like just four random people. The boys are buzzing. Everybody's doing call outs. Everybody's complimenting each other on like nice clutch, good round, great utility usage or whatever. And like, you're making plans, you're executing the plan. You're coming back from nine, three or whatever. And like, it's just so amazing when those moments happen. And like, I refuse to believe that I'm the only one having those amazing experiences in Valorant. And it's not like how everybody else says it. Like, it's just this massive, toxic, horrible experience. Granted, I am higher ranked because I'm better than you Jeez. losers. Jeez. <laughs> you I'm bronze better than and gold. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that does factor in a little bit. Like yeah. people are yeah. kinder in the higher ranks, I think. But there is a lot of people with a ton of ego as well. And when oh, that happens, yeah. you just fucking mute them and then you move on. But that, I, that happens in Counter-Strike as well. Like there's oh, toxic yeah. people in Counter-Strike. 
the only times that I've ever experienced toxicity is when I play with you two. So like that's that's <laughs> no. really it. I'm hey. kidding. No, hey. I'm kidding. No, you guys are. It's very fun to uh, get to game with you guys, and when when we get the chance, Connor and I were talking about it. It's just hard to get five nowadays. Yeah, it's can't. really you can't just get, like stole in on a Tuesday night and get five anymore. Back but in the day, dude, we used to every night. Sometimes there we seven, would have six. Yeah, yeah six sometimes we'd have too many, and now it's now like, you can't uh, get five. Uh, yeah. We're we're busy, and uh, the guys are busy. Games, dude. Yeah, like, and we're playing a lot of video I, games. I need to. Like somebody was asking about on the live yesterday about like how do you have so much time to play games? And it's like, dude, like I've given up everything else in my free time. Like yeah. this is all I do now. I don't watch shows. I don't like go out. Like I just play games. We now. have we have hot D tonight. I, I just remember that. I dude, House I'm of the so Dragon. I've, I you had need to say House of the Dragon. Oh, no, that's no. gonna confuse people. What, what do you mean? We're, we're getting hot delivered D. that hot, hot D. Connor. Nick has been talking oh, about so taking good. glizzies to the throat, <laughs> and he's been talking about that hot D. Connor, on his right. Connor, lightning, you, baby. Connor was <laughs> <really> <laughs> into lightning. Connor's like, are you gonna be like tired? Like, are you gonna bring it? I think I'll bring it. It does. Oh, you're here, right? dude. You're, fu- you're fucking here. Yeah, I'm excited though. Yeah, I'm it's excited for some hot D. I just rewatched the last episode the other night, and I was like. So excited! Yeah. Je- hopefully, Jess doesn't get home too late. She's at Bonnaroo right yeah. now, uh, so her and I can watch it together. Uh, she is would... she rolling out today? Yeah, I think she's gonna watch Chapel and then roll out. But I, I'd imagine, and you probably know this from going, that getting out of there is a nightmare. It's a nightmare when you were at the very end of the day leaving. Yeah. But if you're leaving early, it shouldn't be bad so, at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see. They they, they do a good job of getting out there after after the, everything uh, finishes up. All right, my hot take. You Let's ready hear this? it, Nick. Let's hear the hot take. <laughs> my hot take is going to lead into the conversation we're having about the SGF previews that we saw and everything, and it's going to be a terrific conversation. I'm very excited about this. But, like, my hot take is coming from a comment that I made in a video that I want to expound upon. My gaming hot take for this week is that Monster Hunter Wilds next year will win Game of the Year. Capcom is unbelievable. They're at the top of their game right now. This game is so next gen, so well developed. Capcom knows how to make great games. This is their biggest game ever. It is going to be, in my opinion, their best game ever. I understand what 2025 is. I understand it has GTA 6 as the headliner with Judas and probably Metal Gear Solid Delta and just a bunch of great titles. And I'm not taking away from any of those titles. I think that they're going to be phenomenal. Next year has the chance to be the best year in gaming ever. Monster Hunter Wilds game of the year next year. It will happen. Clip it. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, that's a crazy take. Yeah, there's I too mean, many good games. If you're fable next year as well. Perfect South Dark, of maybe. South of Midnight. Like, uh, I, I don't care. Whatever PlayStation has cooking. Dude, Ghost, Ghost 2. I, I generally am like, I, I, if, unless there's a From Software game that comes out next year, this will win Game of the Year. I think that all of us, it, it's going to take over the fucking world. I think that this game is going to wild. go wild. <laughs> like, it's it's <laughs> insane how good this game looks and to see what a gameplay experience is going to be like if they are able to nail seamlessly joining and co-op and everything they said it's not seamless th- like yeah it's not like one for one right yeah uh, they're uh, they said they i don't know if they said no, no. anything but i've seen details yeah, now that's about it post that like it's not like there's still scenes that you have to like watch on yeah. your own and stuff like that so it's not that was a big issue with the world like there's cutscenes that you have to watch and like certain things you have to do before you can like hop into the other yeah. person's game and stuff like that which is frustrating but i, I think that if they are able to minimize those moments and it won't matter when you're in the hunt in this giant open world with someone else it will be epic it will be the best it gets like i i cannot i never thought i would care so much about this fucking game and now here I am just like blown away after what I've seen. I think it's going to be a game of the year. Right on. I mean, I think it has a chance. I think it'll definitely be nominated. Yeah. If I had to guess, do I think it has a chance to win? Probably not because I just think that Monster Hunter is still niche. Even, I, even I if, think it, that it even goes if it's beyond bigger the niche. than bigger, bigger than it's ever been, it's still niche. You know I what think I mean? it's going beyond the niche. And that's the most important thing where if they are able to capture the Brady's of the world, like where like someone that really enjoys video games and like wants to play the big hitters, especially and like enjoys even talking about it. If they're able to capture that person that doesn't have a major interest in this though, and get everyone in, I think the discord is going to be flourished. Oh, gonna be with, oh yeah. I, I, I need someone for a party. Let's go on a hunt. These moments uh, that we've seen with hell divers and everything is just going to be that, but guess what? It's a triple a banger. In a way that like we'll have all the money in the world going and being pumped into it. It is as good as it gets visually on next gen. Like I am, I cannot 
I sound like a loon. Like, I sound insane, but it's there. It's so fucking good. And I'm so excited to talk more about it with these previews. Yeah. Right on. We're going to get into it. This is everything that we played at SGF with some caveats or whatever. Like, I'm not going to talk about SMT5 Vengeance just because it's out now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was cool. It was really fun to play. New Shinjuku area was cool to explore. This new character. Go check it out if you haven't. Um, I know that Gooperman in the Discord is playing it and is stoked on it. So, and I've heard great things across the board. So, yeah. Uh, that was fun. A good experience to have. Uh, thank you, Sega, for letting us check that out. So are we just going to go in order of the event, like of what we saw? We'll just take it one game at a time. Sure, why not? All right, so kicking it off, we have Lush Foil uh, Photography Sim from Annapurna, made by one person, Matt Newell. It's this uh, photography game where you're walking around these hyper-realistic environments definitely could use some work definitely still in development mm -hmm. um when it comes to the visual aspects but the the premise is there if you're really into photography like you you're walking around with your camera you're getting going around these environments there's little collectibles to find as well um and you're you're taking gorgeous pictures and i think this has the opportunity to have an audience for the photography community but i don't think it really spoke to us personally what do you guys think about yeah, it Yeah, it is pretty niche like it, it's literally a photo simulator like it's got all the buttons and mechanics like of a uh, actual camera yeah. so like you definitely have to know what you're doing and be a photographer uh the music was really awesome oh, yeah. when we were just like i forgot that i was supposed to be taking pictures i was just like wandering around like this is cool i could <laughs> just do this uh but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, just like the the serenity that it provided. We're we're at SGF. It's hustling and bustling. There is so much noise within this show floor and everything, and it's so easily to be distracted by. Hey, that's my favorite creator over there, or I am. I want another Diet Coke. I had a lot of Diet Coke. You that had weekend. a lot. It was insane. Of Diet Coke. Um, Unhealthy. And, and so. Of Diet Coke. Uh, I mean, free Diet Coke. What are you going to do? Um, Take water. But, you have to but, drink water. <laughs> yeah, there was a moment. <laughs> we'll talk about this yeah. in the next episode. Um, but uh, to have a game like this that did lock me in in such a way that I was like, oh, I'm just like in this environment and I'm taking photos and I'm not distracted. Really impressive that they were able to captivate me in such a way that I was like, yeah, I, I, will I pick it up again? Probably not. But am I intrigued for those that it, like I? this is what this podcast is supposed to be right. talking about games that we probably wouldn't get to experience and describe them in a way that is, hey, this is actually going to have an audience and it is really cool. And we promise to like give it a buck if there's something that we didn't enjoy or whatever. We'll, right. we'll be honest with that. Mm -hmm. But this was extremely enjoyable for the 20 minutes we got to play. It's for right. somebody. I don't yeah. think it's for us, but yeah. it's definitely for somebody. Totally. Mm -hmm. um, next up, another Annapurna joint. We have Bounty Star, this mech game where you're you're you have your base camp, you're building out your base camp, you're 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 farming, you're you're improving your mech, and then you're going out into the uh, into the wilds and and fighting in your your metal your metal beast. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, flying around and uh and taking on enemies i thought like the the movement and the the combat was really fluid i'm not mm -hmm. really sure about the base building aspects and like the 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 base camp stuff but i do think in premise like it's a cool idea like go out do your bounties use that money to like build out your base camp maybe make your mech better and then re repeat the cycle or whatever what do you guys think of this one i um enjoyed it it, the art style is like cartoony and kind of like just easy yeah. to step into and be like, all right, like this has a vibe. It's not taking itself too seriously. Like it's trying to do something and it does deliver what it's trying to do of, hey, base camp, easy to understand, easy to like go and put points on upgrades and just like we're going to make a cool ass mech. The combat was very difficult even after oh, yeah. like you a guys, certain point you guys felt like it was i thought I was, I was flying around yeah. uh, well you're a pro when it comes yeah. to mech games okay. and armor i played core six. one armor this core. guy he won't shut up about there's a it. flow dude there is yeah. alex the golden was talking about this like like you get into this like flow state where you're just like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna sound ridiculous on the podcast <laughs> you know what i'm talking about like you're just like you're flying around you're shooting like you're using your like secondary stuff like in in boosting like i don't know there's something about like mech games that is really fun and very satisfying yeah. um, the and it did have that i'm gonna grab a water real quick okay. i'll be right back yeah the developer was there and he did say that they did make it kind of difficult for like the little demo that it oh, will yeah. be easier at the beginning and then get progressively harder but yeah i i thought the art style was really fun and like you said the gameplay was super swift and uh fluid and then i just i i'm a i'm i'm a sucker for some like banjo-y like acoustic music yeah. and it had some like just 
really soft like acoustic in the background and it was uh, super enjoyable it's very western in yeah it's, in its style and the you, wild wild west yeah you can get that from the name even bounty star but yeah. like yeah. uh so it definitely has that aesthetic i think this uh, one of those situations i don't know if i'm gonna play this when it comes out but it's definitely for somebody and mm-hmm. and i don't know how early into development it is but like i can see this getting fleshed out a little bit more and being a bigger more robust title uh but even with what we saw like i can see the picture being painted in yep. front of me you know what i mean like mm-hmm. as to like what the gameplay loop is going to be so and it's annapurna they really haven't put they put out good stuff just in general so um yeah this uh this next title you know it, that like we we before uh we flew in we had this get bumped up and we'll talk about that a little bit more where like all of a sudden we're like oh this is now happening at like one o'clock for us definitely going out of order but yeah is this not the next game? No, but we can do it. What, what's the next game? Delta Force. Oh, totally forgot about this. Never mind. Oh, let, me, let, me, let, me guide the, let me guide the conversation. Yeah, like, I got once it. again, four hours of sleep. I'm just trying to, one, ride the lightning, but two, go and talk about these awesome fucking games. Yeah. I'm so excited. It feels like it was so long ago. It yeah. was last weekend. It feels like so it was crazy. a month ago. Yeah, yeah, it does. At least. Um. So next up, we have Delta Force. We got a behind closed door uh, demo where we got to sit uh and uh, two different stations or whatever uh i i sat on one side and the other boys sat on the other side um brady you want to take it from here on delta force how'd you feel i felt good i mean dude it's just like your classic first person shooter and really like i i like that battlefield like s combat where it's just like a big map and like a bunch of people versus a bunch of people and that was super enjoyable there was those two different game modes and you guys said you liked that one more i was a big big battlefield type game mode where you're just you're going against enemies you're trying to take or you're going against other people mm-hmm. and you're trying to take uh, certain areas and trying push, to take ground. Yeah, take yeah. ground, push each other back and forth or whatever. So like it felt very battlefield in that way. And there was a, a vehicle. You got into a tank. I got into a tank. I got into a tank. Dude, dude. I didn't know. I there, was mac and feeble. I didn't know there was vehicles and then all of a sudden Brady is <laughs> in a tank because we played against each we other. Did, yeah. I didn't know we were playing against each other yeah. and it was so funny. There was a moment where I have like this AR double zoomed in. I'm on this roof and I. These people would just come over the hill, (laughs) and I was a mad lad. Just like four shots, take them out. Four shots, take them out. And the person behind me just goes, whoa. (laughs) Whoa. I was like, because I'm just. You guys do this, huh? (laughs) Just taking these people out. It was so much. It's a great time. Guns felt really satisfying, I thought. I think visually, like, it does leave something to be desired. Like, Mm -hmm. when it comes to its contemporaries, like, it's definitely not as good looking as Battlefield or Call of Duty. But, like, it still looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, how it differentiates itself enough to garner an audience. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's fun. Like, I did have a great time playing it, but it's fun to shoot shit. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm not really sure exactly what the future holds for this they're doing an open beta right? I just on it. just on steam first right yeah um, that just on right. pc first and then they're going from there but um then they had an extraction mode nick you want to take that one yeah this was a uh you you load up you get your load out whether it's your meds or your ammo or the weapons you want to bring in and if it uh if you die, you lose it. You, yeah. But you're trying to go and uh, slay people, get their loot, uh, and then get the hell out of Dodge, extract out. And the thing that I noticed was it felt very vacant. Like, I was consistently yeah. wanting to have more energy and run into more people. And I don't know if it was just the demo or the mode that they were like showing us, but I wanted it to be a little bit more fast-paced. I wanted a little bit more uh, reason to want to hop back in and if somebody takes me out i want to be like okay let's load up another one like i want to go and have that like at fast pace action when i'm playing the shooter this was not uh that for me but it was uh, a mode that you enjoyed brady uh, quite a bit yeah you can have up to a team of three i believe and three in yourself or yeah three three including yourself so a team of three and you can go in and like you said, I, I think that that was the biggest issue. It's like we were having trouble finding people, but I think it was just the demo because when you do it in real, when they come out with the game, it's going to be like other people, like yeah. real people in there. So it should be oh, a lot. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so oh, it's, uh, you were, it was like a PVE type deal. Like you were, you were fighting NPCs, but I, it, that's what we were doing. But it, I believe when the game comes out, it'll oh. be. I think that he's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Online people. So that should hopefully fix that, you would think. But yeah. I, I yeah I enjoyed that game mode. Right. And they also uh, gave us Martinelli uh, sparkling cider, and I haven't had that in like I felt good. Uh, oh, ten years. It was also felt like great. room temperature. <laughs> yeah, oh, and yeah. it was just like not cold in that room. Just, like, yeah. it's, it was warm like it is right now in this room. What but... it was 
70 degree yeah. <laughs> Martin yeah. Hellies yeah. sparkling cider. It was, so that was interesting. They're also coming out with a campaign that's based on Black, Black Hawk, Hawk Down, Down, the yeah. movie, which that could be interesting. I hope the graphics, like I've seen gameplay from that, like yeah. clips that from looks, that, and, and the graphics look better in that. Yeah. So I'm curious how that'll be. It's a good movie, so we'll see. Never seen that movie. Really? Oh, yeah. you gotta do it. Dude, it's an older movie. I've never seen Pre- Saving Private Ryan other than the first. Wha- like, yeah, I've seen like the first. Cut it. The Normandy stuff or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then I fall asleep because we would go to Andy's and have sleepovers, <laughs> and he would start playing it at three in the morning. He's like, "All right, everybody, time for bed, right? You want me to put on the movie? Sure. <laughs> put Saving, on Private Saving Private Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> I'm falling asleep to the screams of people getting absolutely <laughs> toasted uh, on Normandy Beach. I was this like, podcast Dude. is gonna take forever. Yeah, <laughs> we have for so sure. Many games. Fun. It's no, a great, it's a great movie. That's though. why you should watch yeah, it. I was like, I need to grab water. I'm yeah. not gonna be able yeah. to survive this. I'm I'm probably gonna have to grab like two more waters because oh, we're sure. going for three hours. It's gonna be great. <laughs> like I'm doing an hour and a half. I'm closing this. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a Casey Rocker. <laughs> that's very specific. All right. Uh, next we have <laughs> Phantom Blade Zero from S Game. Uh, game of the show? Question mark. Uh, not game of the show for me. But Monster Hunter Wilds is, and I, I will continue to beat that drum for the entire year. Um, this was so impressive yeah mm-hmm. this was what you could want from a demo this is how you do it this Believe was a great, the hype yeah this was a great way to go and really kick off the weekend when it came to those major triple a games that we're looking forward to i think all of us had high expectations going into something like this we're like this should be really awesome and all of us were like yep that yeah, that was just delivered. so so good i there that was the demo i saw the most this entire weekend because it was just consistently oh i want to see someone else play it i want to see how they do it every single time people did things differently and also in really cool ways i i just think that this fast paced action based combat is really cool like they they know what they're doing you hold down your blocks and when you're holding those blocks it's not like super punchy or like it doesn't hit the the dual sense or your xbox elite controller with like with a rumble or anything but it's the animations on the screen are so sick of the ding, 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 as you're just like blocking these quick attacks and then the blue comes in. That's when you know to dodge out of there or the or parry or the red comes in. You know how to dodge out of there. It is so electrifying, right. this combat. And I think that when eventually it comes out, we don't have a date on it, I would assume. And they, they were like, it's down the line. Like this thing is I think coming. it's two years away. Somebody yeah. just drafted it in our fantasy league. Oh, oh for this year. Geez. Oh, no. Like, no. Can't do that. Yeah. Either. Yeah. That's yeah. tough. Dude. I mean, that's it. And that person is named Brady Goodall. It now. was not <laughs> me. It was not uh, me. Did uh, mm-hmm. bids go through for this uh, next week? Yeah. Did uh, you uh, bid on? I, I bid on Veilguard. Uh, well, how much did you bid? I, uh, everything I had left. I bid thirty five dollars like, on it. Did oh, you get I, it? I got it. Uh, <laughs> I, I did fourteen bucks. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I, I want that or whatever. Yeah, I think I it looks that. great. Yeah, I think we that. didn't get to play that, but uh, yeah. did anybody get to, people yeah, had to play? People it, play. Right? People. Yeah. Play. Uh, no, no. Uh, they, they've got to watch it. Watch it. Okay. Yep. Uh, behind um, closed doors. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Phantom Blade Zero is probably the most impressive thing I played at the show. Same. But it's one of those things that like my expectations were. I didn't know what to expect from this. Whereas like Astrobot, which I got to play uh, the next day, like I knew that was going to be fucking great. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Yeah. So like with Phantom Blade, it was just like, geez, man, I refute the fact that it's not a souls. Like I know they were like, it's not a souls. Like I'm like, it plays like a souls. Like I'm, it's kind of, it, it's I'm getting my ass kicked, yeah, <laughs> so, it's not. So, but, the but issue, it's not that hard. But the issue is when people say, is it a souls? Like what they really want to know is, is it punishing? Is it difficult? Are you going to die a lot? And you will die a lot in this game. I refuse to to say that that's not going to be the case. If you I are asking what it's souls like is in my opinion, it is certain stances. Like, I I think that the Jedi stances. Survivor not stances. Uh, I think that Jedi, Jedi Survivor, Survivor is, is not a souls like. That's crazy. I think a souls like has to be you are dropping your souls. You, you need do to then drop pick your souls up. in in Jedi Survivor. You have to repick up souls. Yes, yes, I, dude. I it's been a long time since I played <laughs> Fallen Order, but it, like I I didn't know it was Survivor. So, so yeah. that game is not as challenging as as like a souls like or like a, a dark. But souls if game. you have to pick up souls and sit down to like go and cash them in, that's a souls like. That's so then for me. Hollow Knight is a souls like, right? Yeah. That's weird. I don't see. That's the thing. I don't know what this word means. I don't think anybody really knows what it means. But what I think most people want to know when you say, "Is it a soul?" Like, is is it difficult? That's right. what yeah. they want. Okay. To know. That's what I think. Yeah. Is it? Are you dodging? Are you parrying? Like, there. It definitely has things in common with Devil May Cry. Like, it's definitely faster. It has more in common with like Sekiro, in my opinion, which is a Souls like. So like, it's kind of riding the line for sure. I think this game is difficult. I but like, 
Brady and you guys both got one. You you never got one shot. You got one shot. I got one shot a couple times. Um, like there's bosses that can one shot you. Like that that's pretty souls like to me. So cool. <laughs> it was such a cool game. Yeah, dude. I just I found myself just hovering back. I'm so glad it was in the open room where you can yeah. watch people play because I did just keep hovering back yeah. over yeah. there yeah. watching people w- play. W- watching Andy Cortez play was it, it, hum- it made me feel better about being bad. Delight, <laughs> because it, there the, he was trying to like understand the one shot right, and everything, right. and so he gets one shot, and then he's like, okay, like I'm gonna make sure that like I I can dodge this, mm-hmm. and basically he just didn't many you times. You have to you have to hit that <laughs> perfect so, time. I didn't dodge yeah. it at all. I just hit I, behind pillars. Dodged it. I never saw the the move. I dodged I it every it. single time. See, yeah, well, I, never I dodged it. it perfectly every single I time. And the guy that. next to me was like, "Yeah!" <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Good job. He was <laughs> like, "Oh!" I was like, "Yeah." Dude, dude I like I liked having the guys next to us to kind of guide us through oh, and yeah. answer questions. And then like once I did beat that boss after dying a couple times, I like look over at him. I'm just like, "Yeah, <laughs> no, <nuts, nuts>, dude." <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it was it, uh, shout out to Andy. He did get it done and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it was awesome to go and see people throughout the weekend just dial it in and have right. a great time with this game. Everyone that we got to talk to remotely was one of the first questions was, "Have you played Phantom Blade?" Right. It, it was sick. I'm so excited. Game that's in development still. Visually, I think it needs a little bit of work, but it still looks great right. for a game that's two years out. I think it's gonna look fucking ridiculous. Uh, when supposedly it comes out. two years out. Yeah, probably. Legend. Probably. Yeah. It, my assumption is two. It's years. not coming out next year. Yeah, yeah I, no I think so. No, no maybe I, late. Next I year. honestly could if be you, late next if year. If you were yeah. to go and say what's more likely next year or three years away, I would say three years away. Wow interesting just because i think that like they really locked in this demo to make mm-hmm. sure like we're going to present something that's really fucking Get awesome excited. but like i i think that the way that they were even discussing me like like yeah like we plan on doing this and that and like they're not fully there yet even though mm-hmm. we did get like an art book that did have certain stills that are, are different along the game and everything and that could they could be for the they said that they have like the general premise out now they're just filling it out yeah with right. content is what they said so which sounds to me like they're still very much far in, away in development. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we got to play just details in case you didn't watch the TikTok. Three bosses, one area with with like mob guys, little guys where you could like take them on with stealth or just go straight on. Two sidearms, two main weapons at any given time. You have like a charge up move where like if you do enough blocks and attacks and everything, you can hit L two and I thought it was triangle. It was no. a button. It was a button. Uh, and and do like a flurry like attack or whatever yeah. there's environmental stuff where like when you're fighting the last boss you can like run up a pole and like throw yourself at the boss that's what i did so <laughs> badass dude it's so cool i'm so upset that um, i didn't i know i was watching that. andy cortez play and i just wanted to be like dude please go run up that pole right yeah. now but he wasn't he was just dodging yeah. i just happened to find my way over there i was like okay right on but Same. then like the the secondary is like there's a bow but then there was also like a fucking cannon where you like can charge yeah. up and it's like three you charges fire like, yeah. like and then there's like a fire or like a flamethrower flame you can like hold on the weapons are super cool yeah super yeah. unique super weird you get the boss's uh weapon when you finish yeah, the yeah. fight apparently which makes it like for me Feels when cool. it comes to souls likes and all these like similar action based games that are hard and everything you need to have certain hooks you need yeah. to have tight gameplay but even nowadays you need something extra i think that lies of peace the uh, aesthetic that comes along with it helps put it on the map along with having some of the tightest gameplay out there I think that the boss uh, uh, fights are going to be terrific and everything, especially after what we played. But they're, that hook of, no, you get their weapon. I am so excited to get a sick-ass bo- like a boss that's kicked my ass for three hours, get their weapon, and then fuck up people with that weapon. <laughs> yeah, like That's yeah. going to be so sick. Yeah, so I can't wait for this game. I'm so excited. Um, one of the best demos we played for sure, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, next, we have Hyperlight Breaker. Brady and Nick got to play this one. What would you guys think? It was funny because you were standing behind us for a little bit when we were playing it, and you just said it looked like we were playing two different games. Yeah, because Nick had the guide from the the developer like, yeah. sitting yeah. over and be like, hey, go here, do this, do this. And then Brady was just sitting next to him, like playing and just kind of running around. And I was like, <laughs> he looks like he's like making progress, and you look like you're going nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just wha- whacking people, just running around, climbing I, up stuff. I think that this game is going to live and die by the fact that it is very stylish. The yeah. Uh, yeah. gameplay is very fun. I, uh, the way I describe it is Ratchet and Clank esque, where mm-hmm. you have your uh, slash with like in Ratchet, you have the Ratchet, but in this case, it's swords. Um, and you, there's a bunch of different swords. It's a roguelike, so you're able to go and like change out your sword and your uh, main just uh, uh, square button. But then you have the guns, and the gunplay is wacky a little bit. It's not like tight, like it's not like perfect. But when you're talking about third person over the shoulder 
with a melee option to have like the uh gun option is more it's legitimately a secondary like right. it, it comes to uh, this is not what i am using 90 percent of the time but it is a great way to zone your enemies get some chip damage in have a great time that boss fight was interesting too that yeah. we went into yeah you beat like smaller bosses to make your way to bigger bosses and it wasn't it wasn't easy no and <laughs> i think that that's going to be very uh fun the map changes up after uh, the, i believe five runs it, it like is going to completely shift yeah. on you um completely and, shift on you yeah like oh, it, it doesn't change every single run uh i don't know if it's every single i know that you have five lives and then like that's when uh, like it like completely destroys i don't know if the map changes every single run or if it is every five runs uh i'm not sure i don't remember but i i, mean, I think it's every five it's Unless they just send us back from the same map, because right. I was like, I understand where I'm at right now mm -hmm. and where I need to go. Um, but there's going to be those staples that are like handcrafted for them that are, hey, th this boss is in this corner 24 seven, or there's this chest in this area every single time that's not procedural at all. And I mm -hmm. think that that's really cool. Uh, great game. Uh, literally, the like I, we didn't know if we were going to play this or not. I remember listening to Kind of Funny and the way that they talked about this game for years about Hyper Light Drifter and then even Breaker with some previews that they've had previously. I was like, oh, this is interesting. 100%. This is a game to look out for. I'm going to play the fuck out of it really? when it eventually drops. Oh, yeah. Right, I, so. I think the style is just so cool. Yeah, the style, art style yeah. is terrific. It's these vibrant pinks and blues, and it's really terrific. Uh, and then... Uh, like this is a game that I just want to like hop into because it is really fun and you have a hoverboard and it's really rad. Yeah, yeah the hoverboard was kind of fun. All right. All righty, we have uh, Fatal Fury: City of the Wolves, the return of the Fatal Fury series from SNK. Oh, I'm a wolf. Okay. <laughs> um, I thought this game was fun. I think it has a problem with differentiating itself from its contemporaries necessarily, mm -hmm. but I'm not a fighting game guy. Right. So like, I don't know what the major differences are between this and street fighter. I thought it like kind of looked like street fighter yeah. and a lot of yeah. like the, the modern street fighter, like when it comes to like aesthetic and everything. So I don't know. We had fun beating each other up for an hour, but at the same time, like I don't really know if this is going to blow the doors off of mm -hmm. the fighting game community, but I'm sure that the fatal, uh, the Fatal Fury fans are excited. Right, so just I, to briefly touch on it, uh, this for me was okay. This 2D fighter is really technical. Like you, yeah. the combo list that they gave us and everything was a spreadsheet. Nearly, dude. I was like nearly, trying to figure yeah, it out. It, but it was it was huge. Yeah. Like they, oh, it, yeah. it, it was a massive list for even like they. I think they there was five or six playable characters that we got to right. try right. out and everything. Yeah. I was so overwhelmed, and as someone that like loves Tekken and loves learning those combos and it's really like it's difficult but does work in a way that like scratch the niche is, mm -hmm. is very satisfying Tekken I, I, 8 I will to the cats come home be like it is so impressive how they're able to like easy win but also have it be technically really difficult right I was not able to get these moves down to any degree really while we were playing and I was trying really fucking hard. Yeah, right. And I think that that is a little bit of a knock, but you know that the fighting game crazies are going to be all okay. up in this and know how to develop it. They're going to be on the pad going crazy. And then like, I I'm excited for them, but to, to warn the more casual audience that those, there are certain fighting games that like Tekken guilty gear, like some of these like more difficult fighters that are huge, if you like those, this might not be the one for you. Right. But if you are really into fighting games, then yeah, try it out. I had a great time just because I don't think I lost one time. Oh yeah, Brady, <laughs> Brady ass. Clown that was crazy. I don't even know. That's how the whole. That's it. the. the I, let me be honest. I fucking hated it because Brady beat my ass. That's <laughs> it. that's the only reason. <laughs> that's I the, it. It's funny because I wasn't looking at the spreadsheet. I yeah. was just pressing buttons. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing where I, I, try to get the basic right co like combos and certain inputs just were not there and like mm -hmm. it, it was at a certain point like that that itch never got scratched right. and that's something that i need in a fighting game experience is like to have it difficult but manageable like right. you will be able to do it and then when you get to the crazy combos that you get with tekken and everything it that those those are for the people that are like Dude, those are combos are wild i don't know how people like retain that information oh, there's, there's well, no way it, it, it's because those people play that game like and, we play valorant oh, where it's fair. like you just go wild with it and then you learn call outs and positioning and everything uh next up is next up DB. we have dragon ball 
Sparking Zero. Mm-hmm. What really what? fun experience. We got a behind closed door presentation um, where they went over a bunch of the details of the game. And then we got to go hands on with it. Uh, a little bit of a snafu on exactly how that was going to work because we didn't know that <laughs> we, we thought we were all going to have our own station. But as one outlet, we got one station to trade off on, which was awesome. Anyways, we all got a chance to hop on the sticks and play a match. So fun, dude. Like this, the kids, the anime kids, the Dragon oh, Ball kids are going to be up, losing yeah. their mind, dude. Like I like Dragon Ball quite a bit. I like the original Dragon Ball more than I like Z, but like I really do like those first couple arcs of the um, Dragon Ball Z uh, series. And getting to play this and knowing stuff about the anime, it's like, dude, this is just the anime come to life. It's so epic. It's so over the top. It feels fast. Like you are flying around these arenas. And there's so many different characters. And there's a ton of uh, like environmental stuff, like with where you can break things. I saw there's a video going around right now of where if you're in the world tournament, like arena or whatever, and there's like a crowd like around you, um, when you do like one of your special moves that, that's like going to be like an area of effect thing, there's like a cutscene that plays where like the, the announcer's like, everybody get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and everybody runs out and then like the move happens and like the, the arena blows up or whatever. Oh, and the whole stage awesome. changes. Yeah. Like this game is going to be, Dude, this is like Dragon Ball fans like dream game, oh, yeah. I feel like. And it's it's delivering on everything that you could have wanted as a Tenkaichi fan. When we first saw this game, like when they first did the reveal trailer where it was just Goku like screaming or whatever, and I was like, I don't know if that looks great. It looks visually like really mm-hmm. solid, dude. Like the animations are pretty fucking awesome. It looks like the anime, and that's what you want out of this. So I'm I'm stoked. What do you guys think? Uh, hop over to Brady. What what do you what, what do you think? Dragon Ball is not really my wheelhouse. I I've never gotten super into Dragon Ball, but being able to touch this game, it was it was a super great time. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun playing it. Hyperbolic Time Chamber is the only thing you can do couch cool. battle, mm-hmm. couch split screen on at first because I didn't know this. It's th- there will probably be more in the future. Fans were like, you need to have couch split screen in this. And they, they were like, they were not going to do it. And then they were yeah. like, we, okay, fine, we'll do it. This is a late edition hyperbolic time chamber. And if you don't know anything about Dragon Ball, it's just like a white void, basically, or whatever, yeah. um, where people go to train. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's super basic and super barren. So that's why they're able to handle it. So I assume in the future there will be more maps that you can go into and play against your your friends on the couch. But like, man, like, oh my God, I can't, I can't wait to beat the shit out of you guys. I want to, I, I want to <laughs> stream this game. I want to play this game. I want, any excuse to just have fun and play Dragon Ball. Like Get into the, Dragon Ball Z, Nick. Come on, watch. Just watch Kai. It's it's like a yeah, short. Just, it's a shortened well, version. I, I, it's a shortened so, version I have of so it. much time to go and watch TV. That's not the bear. It's, it's the only boys. like 150 episodes rather than like 300. Only 150 <laughs> episodes. I don't actually think it's that long. You you anime lovers. I it, it, it never. What'd you call me? <laughs> it never is lost on me how wild y'all are when it comes to the episode length. And yeah, I watched How I Met Your Mother multiple times. That's 200 episodes. Yeah, Nick's out here watching theory. challenge seasons from like <laughs> 10 years ago. It's like, fuck, I'm going to watch challenge 12 or whatever. Like, Nick, this is MTV trash television. Yeah. I'm trying to get you to watch Peak right now. Yeah. And you're like, no, it's too long. It's, what are you for, talking for about? Me, for me, uh, <laughs> what I have learned is uh, Attack on Titan and Full Metal being around 60 to 80 episodes. That's that how you get me spot. in. That's how you get me 24 in. 24 episodes is the sweet spot. Your Cowboy Bebops and oh, like Gurren just... Lagans or whatever like oh, that's, see, that's my wheelhouse yeah when like i've only watched handfuls of anime and what really brings me to an anime is like it's under 100 episodes yeah. i'm like I, I can do this right. i tried to watch naruto got to season four and i was season like season four wow, yeah I was, I was just ripping through it dude and there's filler episodes and stuff but i was like all right i i give up i'm gonna go fucking watch attack on the yeah, longest <laughs> i've ever watched is hunter hunter and is 160 episodes and i was like jesus christ yeah i get bored dude. i want to get like, into uh, naruto i, I just, think it's time. Uh, <laughs> it's time so you'll watch naruto but you won't watch <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, I just uh, fucking dunk on you. I want to do it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, no, Nick, I, Nick, moments after saying like too I many episodes, <laughs> but it. I'm gonna get into Naruto. Yeah. <laughs> it's short, right? There's, it's like six episodes. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Christ. So, there's like three different series. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Naruto, Shippuden, and Boruto or whatever. Don't look at me. Shippuden <laughs> is the one I want to get into. This but you gotta watch the original, right? <laughs> what? All right. 
I think you have to watch the original. Before. Uh, I mean, like, we'll work it out. Uh, I'll, I'll call up Snowbike Mike. He'll give me like a forty-five second yeah. like. Are you gonna be able to like do all like the the hand the movements hands, or whatever? Uh, no gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. think that when people are are doing those for for an interview, I'm like, they're so cool, dude. They are really cool. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> what? This podcast needs to end, and we are. Dude, we're laughing. not even. I'm having a great we're, time. We're, we're having have fun. It's gonna be a oh, five-hour podcast. Yeah, we have no. a PS3 draft we're supposed to do. Dude, <laughs> there, we're gonna draft at the end of this, and uh, I'm gonna be like. Right, we are three hours in, uh, but I, we'll go as one hundred percent. This has been yeah. awesome. I we love are, this. We are not even halfway through. Oh, yeah. the list right I'm, now. Some of these we'll cook through. Yeah. Um, well, waiting is a game that I played. Uh, Day of the Devs, one developer. It's kind of like um, it reminded me a lot of Untitled Goose Game. You're a boy in many waiting situations where you're like waiting for the bus, waiting for your luggage, and you're like supposed to walk around the environment and like do certain tasks. You have like a checklist that you get like stickers for, for doing them. I thought it was a little bit too light on direction for like, it it would give you like the list, but it wouldn't be like do this specifically. It would be like a clue kind of, Um, but it's cute. It has a nice little art style. looks like a kid like drew it or whatever, which is like very charming and everything. I think this is another one of the games where, like, I can see the audience for this for mm. sure. Um, people who like Untitled Goose Game and like silly things like that, and just kind of something that's a little bit more relaxing and laid back. Like, you're gonna have something to enjoy here. 100 percenting this game, I think, and like figuring out what exactly you need to do in these situations. It's gonna be a lot of fun. One developer, the guy was super nice, um, who was giving me the the walkthrough and everything. Uh, so certainly keep this on your radar if you like cutesy little fun games like that. Or That's, whatever. Yeah. It was a day of the devs. I don't have the devs for like every single one of these, but yeah. Uh, the day of the devs like had a booth or whatever it's where they like mm-hmm. uh, after their presentation. So there was just a bunch of games to play there. So yeah. Con- Connor's the only one that played that. So yes. Whatever I'd... Then Brady and I went hands on with path of exile <laughs> Two, baby. Dude, that game was so fun. So <laughs> fun. It, it, Brady and I are not, ARPG people like I've never gotten into Diablo I've never been this kind of guy we sat there for like an hour played through the tutorial then went through like a a whole like other area I got to like a boss fight that was kicking our teeth in but like it was just there was so much depth when it comes to like the leveling system and the different classes there's a new witch class that's that's coming we didn't touch that or whatever um but it's I play as an archer you played as a monk I think yeah I and had a stick and I was just whacking people. Dude, and like we were dodging around. We were so we, fun. The dude. boss design that we were fighting that was kicking our teeth in was like this big like tree monster that like had like multiple phases and like I wanted to win so bad. I wanted to run it back, but I was like, all right, we gotta go we play, gotta go play game. anything <laughs> else. Games. But like I this game was not on my radar at all. Uh, yeah. I had seen trailers for it and I know that Path of Exile is a beloved franchise. And getting to play this, I'm like, Brady and I are going to play this. Or Absolutely. Like, it's going to be so fun, dude. Like, yeah. I, I had a blast. So if you're into those kind of games, like, keep, like, actually, like, yeah. Like, even if you're not, like us, also keep it on your radar because it was a ton of fun, dude. Like, visually, it's really impressive, like, with this top town, uh, like, aesthetic, but, like, still looks really good. Very dark atmosphere, very dark tone. We only got to go into those couple environments. So I don't know if, like, the other environments will right. be a little bit more vibrant, but either way, like, I can see myself doing a bunch of different classes, trying new things out, leveling up my character, going out and getting some loot and going back to base camp or whatever, and then just beating up monsters. Yeah, there's with Brady. so much depth in that game. And there's there's a lot of different enemy styles that were all super creative and like fun to fight against. Right. Yeah. The biggest compliment I can give to this game that I did not play was that the boys would not <laughs> shut the fuck up about it. Yeah. I, it dude, awesome. I could have sat there and yeah. played it over and over again. It, there's a lot of depth to it. Like we even in the short time that we played it, I got to upgrade to different moves and stuff. And yep. I was like throwing ice and then like you could shoot. Oh the yeah. Ice. There was like combo things or whatever. Yeah, like was he was like, like cool. putting an ice thing down and then I would shoot the ice thing and it would explode yeah. or whatever. And we were communicating the entire time. Oh, like yeah. You get behind him. So then you can do damage from behind and I'll, I'll kind of take the aggro. And then we were like taking out like tendrils. Like the boss fights are definitely like where like that kind of really sings where you're like, okay, let's communicate. Let's talk. Let's talk strategy. Save your, um, save your potions for later. And then there were situations where like Brady would be down and I would like be like kind of just running and circling trying to train things and then i would get him up and then he would get back up and then we would and then while i would go down and it was a ton of fun yeah. dude like we had like awesome. uh, we had the employees or whatever behind us watching it like almost rooting for us yeah. i like wanted that boss fight so bad we got it very it close, so to close. The end. so uh but we had to move on but that was, yeah uh, yeah you Can't guys wait. seemed like you had a blast and oh, i'm very wait. very jealous that like you guys have got the, i mean like i'm just love both of you and i want to have fun experiences too but plus, uh, like plus the couch co-op or what like just being able to play on the same screen yep. in the same room together like that type of game especially is huge yeah yeah uh 
Next, Nick played uh, Parcel Core, Corpse, Parcel Corpse, Corpse, uh, which is like this package delivery biking game. Nick, tell us about it. Dude, <laughs> this game is fucking awesome. And if you are somebody that's been clamoring for more games like Jet Set Radio, like Crazy Taxi, like these older games, that uh, Tony Hawk, I like these games that are... Can you grind on the You bike? can grind oh, on yeah, the dude. fucking Look, bike. I'm so sad. You I can get to play. ride on... Off of like ramps and then a uh, wall ride. Like, yeah. it is. Oh, really? Yeah. That's sick. It is super <laughs> fucking cool. It's a uh, like cartoonish or style once again, but like. Similar it, to Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio. Like very bomb much. Rush, so. Cyber Funk or Cyber Funk Bomb Rush, as yeah. Nick called it that one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we all make mistakes, everyone. Oh, but no, this game is fucking rad. And I, I like, it went, uh, I believe this comes out September 3rd. Put it on your radar. This is September a game. September 3rd. That's soon. Uh, it's soon. Oh, nice. Go. This is if you want games like New Jet Set Radio and like Crazy Taxi, fucking show up for something so like this. So what exactly are you doing in this game? You're you are going delivering to packages. So you're pick, you're going. Either you have a map. You roll up to somebody. One of the people was the wine king. So you're picking up some wine. And then you go and drop off the wine to someone that needs a delivery. So is it timed? But there's mm. certain, well, there's different modes, Connor. Okay. There is the timed <laughs> mode where you have to go and like drop off to add more time. And then you are, it's literally crazy taxi. Okay. And it's fucking awesome. And then there's can like you a damage story. damage the goods? The, there's a story mode See? where you can damage certain goods. I'm asking the right question. Connor is laying me up and I'm hamming <laughs> it down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bang, let's go. So you got to keep him safe. You gotta Celtics uh, lost game four. Fuck. Anyway, really? They, oh, they got smoked. Oh, they got, uh, I roll up and I see the Caesar down seven points. Like, uh, well, I'm like, I, I'm at a stoplight and I go and just type in Celtics and it, see, oh, we're down seven. And then I, for a solid hour and a half, two hours, I'm just, or uh, not an hour and a half, uh, about an hour later, I'm driving in. I drop my stuff off, and I go, "Hey Scott, like how the seas doing?" And he just goes, "We're we're not watching the seas tonight." <laughs> it's over. It's it was like over. 126 to like 86. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! It, it, Let's it go off by 40. Um, <laughs> and, but uh, I don't so even care. yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry for the basketball because uh, I we're talking about getting yammed on. This game is fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> is that how we got in that conversation? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's funny. You uh, you lofted it uh, off, yeah, I, and yeah, I dumped yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but seriously, I I. This is a prime example of show up with your wallet or wish list. So, like, this is a game people should, if you want something like this, support games that are cool and mm -hmm. are, are really awesome. I really think that this is a very interesting game. I don't know what the price point is. I don't think it's going to cost you too many bones. Like, it's not going to be that right. expensive. And I this is such a Brady-ass game, too, of, like, Oh, oh like uh, like a couple hours of just uh, doing Crazy Taxi. Am I going to play this game forever? No. Do I want to go and like play it for a few hours? Like th when the demo was over, I was immensely bummed out because I just want to play more of it. Right. Because it is so give and go. Give me a Diet Coke. Give me some snackies and let me uh, deliver some packages. <laughs> snackies. Uh, snackies. Next up, we have another game that looks really rad. Death Sprint 66. Yeah. I was the only one that got to play this one. It, it's it's more of a simple game, but it's basically like Mario Kart for adults. You're just running classic courses. There's easier courses, and then there are the harder courses where there's literally literally lasers that you got to like wall run and dodge, or else you just get absolutely obliterated. And yeah. do you like when you get obliterated? Do you like get just put back or whatever, and then you you start going again? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Kind of like Mario Kart esque, except for like you just get exploded blood. Do you know everywhere. how many players it is? How many people can play? I'm altogether? actually not sure. I only ran uh, courses by myself, and then our time uh, uh -huh. ran out, so I didn't get to do courses with like other players around me. But I know I assume like eight to twelve. Eight, yeah, like, yeah it's cool. up there because you, you. I think you're able to play with up to four friends or whatever online. Oh, nice. It comes out. It's only coming to PC at first. He said later this year. I don't know if they have an exact day yet. It's going to be $20. He's, he was very adamant that there's not like any battle passes or stuff after mm -hmm. that. Like you, that $20 gives you all the money and then hopefully comes to console later if it uh, does well. Did you feel fast? I felt fast. You looked like you were going boy. fast, dude. Dude, I felt so cool. And then instead of like, you, there there are still like the mystery boxes like Mario Kart like or whatever that you can pick up. And then there's power up stuff that make you go faster. You have a boost button. You have like a sprint button or okay. whatever. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time. I could absolutely foresee us all playing this, yeah. playing it online with our buds. I feel like even the time trials of just trying to go faster and beating your best time or whatever on some of these courses looks like a lot of fun. Like you're you were just beaming it, going yeah. through lasers or whatever. Like so, is it like just a straight thing, or is, you said there's walls that you can run? You can on, wall, right? yeah. Okay, you can yeah, wall yeah. run. You can, and sometimes you have to like 
you have to jump over lasers, but someday you do have to wall run. And like, even though you are sprinting, you're ramping, dude. You're yeah. ramping over stuff. Yeah, you're jumping. It's it was a great time. I'm excited. To, I, yeah, watching it. you. I only got to watch you play for like literally two minutes, and those two minutes were electric. <laughs> like, yeah. they, they were awesome. When his like other appointment showed up, and I had to get up, I was like. Oh. Yeah, I was yeah. having a good time. Uh, then we all got a presentation of Aloft, which is this new survival game uh, where it is set place on a bunch of sky islands where you can fly around from sky island to sky island. There is combat where you're uh, eradicating the uh, what what was it the called? Defilements or something? Yeah, I, 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 bad, I can pull bad it up. guys. The bad the the, the the there's like fungi that is taking over yeah. uh, some of these islands. Um, and they are not fun guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're guy? so you're Who taking them him? out to like reclaim the islands and you're making your way towards like the center of the storm. But like, it's really just about like, you can have your own Island. You can build out your own base. There's, there's a player. I think it was a player co-op. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and you can even, the uh, corruption. Corruption. They call it corruption. You can even take your island and like copy it and drop it into somebody else's world. Mm-hmm. So you can like have like your little like archipelago of, of islands. I thought like there was certain aspects that just looked a little bit stiff. I just wish that there was like more fluidity to like the flying, mm-hmm. but the concept itself is just really fucking cool. Like sky islands flying around, like just being in this space, like seems like a, a ton of fun to explore go out, gather items, get like your cloth and your wood and everything similar to that of like a Minecraft situation. I feel like every survival game gets compared to a Minecraft, but right. um, like from an aesthetic standpoint and from like a gameplay standpoint, I thought it looked pretty fun. Like when you, when you're doing um, certain like attacks and certain like, uh, like you're cutting down trees, like there's like a, there's like a bar that you have to press twice on or whatever. So like, there's like a sweet spot where you're like clicking. So like it has a little bit of like a, level of strategy to not just like click 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 it's like okay eh, 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 like a yeah, quick time event a like little bit more or whatever. Yeah. yeah i need yeah. i personally need that like i think of skyrim and we bash on that gameplay all the time where it just feels like i'm just clicking uh, whereas this feels like okay there's a little bit more to it mm-hmm. um this is definitely i'm not a survival game guy but i think this is a once it, like i we our friend jason is really yeah. into games like grounded and minecraft and everything and i'm like this is a jason ass game. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think it like for the people that do like it it does have like longevity yeah. it had a lot of depth to it like at first i was like i'm not getting the point but then he just kept talking he was like you could do this you could do yeah. this you can uh, like change this yeah adjust this and then yeah it, it has longevity for the people that like will play a the ton game. of unlocks a ton of like like relics to find that yeah. unlock new like recipes mm-hmm. and stuff and that was the cool thing that i took from it was there's these stones that you walk up to and that's how you learn like new crafting abilities and it makes the idea of like what a day in the life of this playing this game is going to be is really interesting because it will be okay like today i just need to explore mm-hmm. so like i'm gonna go and like and the exploring is you're going sky island to sky island that is objectively cooler than just walking around a map like it is very it's way more interesting and honestly like there's fun to it the traversal is fun which i think that a lot of uh games in those space just don't have that aspect to it It, this does then let's learn these stones and recipes and everything and then after the fact it it can be okay now tomorrow i'm doing corruption and i just want to clear out these islands and that i'm going to face this boss where like it's cool that there's things beyond just the mindset of like i want to make my house pretty and i want to like do that and And that's there but there are a few other hooks that are interesting and the way that the map works is like a big circle and there's like quadrants and there's in the center there's like this big storm where like corruption is like at its worst i guess and like i like that there's some sort of draw to be like okay like we're heading towards something it reminds me of no man's sky when you're trying to get to the center of the universe like there's something there to want to work towards and i i do think that For me, for survival games, I like having that, like, that pull, that draw, or whatever. All right, next up, we have Nick got a behind-closed-door experience with Monster Hunter Wilds. And 20 minutes, go. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to try to keep it short. This is just... Keep it a buck. This is... uh, Keep it 100%. Uh, This is, like, one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my life. Uh, Well beyond just, like, what... The, the what we are doing and like seeing and everything this made the trip worth it this was uh like the only reason that the, the whole team didn't go was because of some scheduling things that we didn't think were going to work out i wasn't supposed to see astros uh, because of this and everything and it worked in a way that i was able to and it was really awesome but 
to have this experience, the game being played by the director, and for it to be the most epic shit I've ever seen in a video game, I I was just jaw agape after watching this. Like I cannot describe it without sounding like a nut job, but it's the coolest shit ever. Monster Hunter is so rad. Obviously, the different weapons and dude uh, seamless uh, open world a seamless open world experience um and then the hub world and the way that you have like the the coolest stuff that uh, i can bring up at many points go and watch the video on tiktok if you want to hear like a more rambly crazy rant but i'm gonna hyper focus on this one point because i think that this attention to detail and how cool certain things are within this game beyond just the monsters and everything are all across the board the fact that you can go into this crazy large open world, set up a base camp, and then within the middle of a fight, go back to that base camp or before the fight starts, make your food. And the food porn in this game is crazy. It <laughs> looks so good. My stomach was grumbling after seeing this dude cook. I And then if you do go back to the camp, it just might not fucking be there because a monster might destroy it as you're just experiencing other randomness. That attention to detail and how cool that is aspect is is the same for every aspect within this game sounds very alive it's very alive very like i don't know how they're gonna pull it off but they fucking pulled it off and the capcom obviously has been on a winning streak it's for a tear. just so long at this point this will continue that winning streak this was one of the coolest things i i've ever seen and experienced and uh thank you for watching this and making this that uh, opportunity possible it is that cool it is like it's the coolest shit ever i i'm so stoked for it it's gonna be game of the year next year it's gonna be my most anticipated game for next year i i am i cannot wait every and like they discussed being like oh we're gonna be at gamescom and stuff like you'll see us again at gamescom i believe at the end of sgf uh like when they did uh not like play days but the showcase i want to see more every opportunity i know certain people at a certain point are gonna be like i don't need this i want it i want all of it load me up you can't give me enough of this game i want to see all the new weapons i want to see all these crazy monsters and one i i can't wait to play this game with you guys i hope it's early next year i think it's going to be yeah personally, me too but i think um, that we're gonna get a date at gamescom and i think that it's gonna be like february yeah that sounds that sounds right to me yeah um, then you got to play a little bit of Street Fighter Six M Bison, the new character. Yeah, classic uh, character. Classic here. character. I'm not, I'm once again just like I enjoy fighting games. I really have fun with fighting games. I did not like pop off when M Bison got announced for this game or anything because I don't understand Street Fighter to that level. Played a few games. Played against a guy. Uh, he won two. I won one. So I did get to a dub. It wasn't Brady <laughs> beating my ass for an hour um as i tried to like figure out combos but uh very intuitive very powerful character the punches hit hard it, it's it you feel even bigger than certain street fighter characters that right. are huge and i think that that just comes in with this guy being a badass i right. i don't have too much to say on it but i did enjoy my time playing a oh, few yeah. rounds of street fighter and excuse to play a few more rounds of street fighter right. <laughs> fuck yeah then you got to play uh path of the goddess yep uh it, this game is when people talk to us about like uh rating and scaling games and everything this wouldn't be the most impressive thing that i played on the weekend but it doesn't mean i had, didn't have a great time learning these mechanics so the main objective is you have the goddess you're trying to carve her a path i know that sounds really dumb but that is literally the gameplay loop you uh the way you do so is there's these defilements and that's what actually where it came from was uh, right. this not a loft uh, where these look like fucked up flowers basically these flowers that are really beautiful but you can tell are a little bit messed up you hold circle it pops out a bunch of bubbles and that's like your points that you go and uh, are able to use and turn in to wait, be able to carve the path and then as night falls you the gate that you're trying to carve into opens up and there's a bunch of monsters there was not variety in the enemies and i think that that sort of just shows like what type of game this is where it's not gonna be uh, hopefully in the future there's more enemies and variety and variation but like for this demo it was very much all right i'm just mashing square taking these guys out getting more bubbles and points and everything and all of a sudden the night finishes up and it's like all right day two and you're like cool 
let's just carve this path. And I, when I finished that out and my time was up, I was just like, this is very interesting. The art style is interesting, but it didn't fully get there for me. And right. so Think I'm curious, yeah. but I'm not all in yet. Right on. Yeah. Next up, Astrobot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I got to go hands on with this. Nick got to play a little bit after I finished up, uh, but they both watched me do the whole thing. We wanted to, or this was Nick's idea to like just let me play the whole thing, just yeah. to have like the mm-hmm. full experience. Uh, they they were like, do you, you can switch out whenever you want. And my my whole mindset was, I rather Connor be able to experience everything and have a full opinion for you guys than to have some level of like. Uh, I just want to play Astrobot. I'm thankful I did get a few minutes of it, but I'm very curious, especially a week after the fact. Is this like where are you at with this? I demo? mean, I fucking loved it. I, th- this game is should be talked about on the same level as any major AAA Sony first party game, like with your Ghost of Tsushima, your Last of Us, your Astrobot. Like I think this game has a ton of depth to it when it comes to the variety of the power ups, the collectibles, the different level aesthetics the music the way that the controller is utilized like everything about this game feels next gen and and one thing that i really did want to harp on is that like with the controller usage that playing astro astro's playroom at launch and like feeling those controller triggers and like how all that worked in the haptics i was like this feels like it could be the next gen thing because i don't think visually we're gonna like be blown away by visuals on the ps5 i think games already just look great at mm-hmm. this point so this could be like they're 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 in this could be like the, the thing that makes games feel new and i feel like we haven't really pushed it in that space a ton and then picking this up and experiencing that and getting those those little uh finishing touches and those little accoutrements with the controller like i was like oh yeah this feels next gen. This feels so cool as as you're walking on glass and there's like little tippy tappies and you can feel it on the controller. There was a puzzle that I was doing. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember where like I was like down below something and like there was a bunch of squares and like I had to figure out which the right square was. Oh, yeah. um, and it, like the haptics on the controller were like kind of guiding me to where the correct one was. Like that's super cool. Like I think like all of the controller stuff feels so next gen, so unique and so like one of a kind and we're four years in with this controller uh, about to be over in the fifth year and nobody's doing it like them still. So that felt amazing when it came to each level, two levels of like basic platforming, just getting to the end, you're collecting your, your little, your little last robots along the way. It seems like each one is going to be PlayStation specific, like a specific PlayStation game themed. So you had ratchet and clank in the first one. I don't know if clank was in, the first one. Yeah. I, going back on it and like thinking back, like so there's PlayStation symbols next to the ones that are gonna be PlayStation themed. There seems to be six or seven per level for like the main levels. Um, multiple of them are just gonna be basic Astrobots, and then some of them are gonna be PlayStation themed characters. Um, there was Ratchet and Rivet. I you would assume that Clank would be in there, but he might be just in another level. I, I think that there's a chance that there's like obviously Secret Agent Clank platformer and everything. Maybe we get a sidekick level where we get Dexter and Clank as the two. That's a Dexter. good call. Dexter. <laughs> Every time, dude. I, dude, I am saying the same thing you are. <laughs> no, no, you can't I'm gaslight us, dude. You can't. I was crazy once. Was crazy. Holy shit, this podcast will never end. <laughs> this is my hell now. <laughs> and then there was uh, Um Jammer Lammy and Prapper the Rapper in the second one. Um, and then there was other ones that I will leave for you guys to, <laughs> to find out. But there was tons of secrets to find going off the beaten path felt super rewarding. I was always like, Oh, what's over here? Ooh, what's over here? And you can utilize your new abilities. There was like one where Astrobot like would like blow up into a big ball and you can like kind of like float into the air. There was one where he has like a rocket boost where you could like fly through glass and like fly into enemies and stuff, which was pretty cool. And there was the rock'em sock'em gloves, which I thought were the coolest of, of them where you could like, you could extend your arms. You had to extend your arms to like punch uh, enemies and then also like latch onto like sticky surfaces and like and then swing across like it just felt like the best parts of little big planet and like mario mixed together if that yeah. makes sense like mm-hmm. everything about this just was pure joy pure happiness i we all had a smile on our face the entire time just like laughing being like oh holy shit there's that there's this that's super cool what the fuck is going on here oh that's amazing like everything about it just felt and played amazingly the boss fight you're fighting against this giant squid 
and you're starting on this like small like beach area at first and then you're you're taking you, there's like phases to that and then like it goes like into like a platforming section and then there's another like platform that you're fighting them on again i was like i thought it was just gonna end at the first section mm -hmm. and then there was like multiple phases to it and i was like this is fucking next level they did not need to go this hard yeah. and they did and th then the payoff at the end oh, it was awesome i'll save it for, for when you get to it but like i cheered at the end of the boss fight i thought it was so cool <laughs> like i was like fuck yes man and then uh, because i'm a skilled gamer like that i got to go on to do the challenge level which was based off of the circle button. And I died a whole bunch on this one. And it's like everything that is in that level, you're chasing down an iconic PlayStation character. Once again, I'm going to leave that a surprise as to who it is. But there's like, there's things that are swinging in a circle and everything. So it seems very circle based. Like it's mm -hmm. themed after the circle button, which is super cool. Like everything about this is so PlayStation celebration feeling that it just. It just makes me so happy as somebody who grew up on uh, PlayStation and enjoyed all of these franchises. But I died a ton on this, so there's a nice level of challenge there. Am I bad at video games? Yes. So like maybe you'll probably <laughs> get this like on the first couple tries. But like I did think that there was some level of difficulty here. But after finishing that, the level designer uh, developer who was watching over us came over and was like, "Hey, like since you got through that pretty quick or whatever, you can if you go back over here. There's like a." Uh, an asteroid coming in if you if you stand in front of that with your character like on your little ship it'll it'll spawn another challenge level and this one was based off of the x button and same deal very challenging utilize like time manipulation you could like slow down the level and everything which was super cool and super creative like everything about this was just it kept getting better and better. I was like, this is fucking awesome. This is fucking awesome. This is fucking awesome. And like, dude, September cannot come soon enough. I can't believe we're close to this. It yeah. feels like yeah. September is going to be that. creeping up on us like in no time. So that was a ton of fun. Had a blast. Oh, I played man. a little bit of it. Yeah, I, I got to play uh, like literally a level. Uh, unbelievable. This game's awesome. The couple things. Uh, one, played it on the PS5. That Everything that we did was on PS5 and not PC or anything like that. They wanted to harp on that and it is so fucking impressive how good this game is it is so it looks visually it looks amazing it sounds amazing the music's unbelievable it's uh, the music is as good as playroom if not better and playroom's unbelievable this is like connor said at, it's a big dog it's it's not hey this is like sony's has a shit year i'm more excited for this game than like certain Sony first party bangers. I'm more excited for this game than I was at God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Really? <laughs> but, oh, or Spider Man 2. I really am. Like, yeah. I love those games, but like, I'm stoked on this, dude. Uh, and I genuinely, like, Connor left this demo and was like, that might have been like the best moment of my fucking life. Yeah. Like, it, I like, can't believe, like, growing up on PlayStation giggling, and yeah. get to getting to do this. It's like, the fuck is my yeah. life at this point? It, it, it's, it's awesome. It really is. Uh, my biggest takeaway before uh, I let Brady talk is we were in the airport talking. And if you want to hear our, our fun airport stories, wait for the pod tomorrow. Um, But we're in the airport and Connor and I sort of have a realization. I bring it up. I'm like, there's a chance Astrobot ends up being our game of the year for Co-op 64 even though Connor and I 100% are both giving FF7 Rebirth our number one slot. But if we all have it as our number twos, and then Brady puts uh, FF7 Rebirth at like four or five or six or something, the math can work out where Astrobot would be our game of the year, and I would be okay with it. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. I, I cannot, it like... I hope it's that good. I, I, it's, yeah. it, it, from I, what it we sure played, will be, from what we played yeah. it is that good. Yeah. This game, I, I got it on our fantasy creative team once again, if you want to hear some fun stories about that next episode but i am like this could get this could get 95s yeah. like on if this was a mario game people would be losing oh, yeah. their, their mind. fucking mind it, 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 it it's almost disrespectful how people need to go and like be like oh no this bot's got it like this yeah. bot is going this little guy is about to take sony to the fucking promised land this year right. it is so good i am it's my most anticipated game the fall is fucking stacked now and we haven't been able to like fully discuss it on a podcast. I'm going to discuss it a little bit right now. We went from having what felt like nothing. We we had a big board, and I was like, oh, there's like five. Or, uh, there was four reviews, and then like I missed one with Black Myth. Now we're uh, the fall is loaded, Fucked. fucking yep. loaded. We're going to be extremely busy, and the best part is we're going to have that season from August 20th to September 6th, where it is 
Uh, it starts out with Black Myth, and then it is Concord, and then it is Secret or Visions of Mana, and then uh, it's Astros. I'm so excited. I'm so ready for it. It's going to be terrific. Already. Oh, uh, Brady, do you have that? Oh, yeah. oh, no. You guys pretty much nailed it all on the head. Uh, the one thing I would say is with all these like S tier games that PlayStation puts out, they're all so like emotional and like pull your heartstrings, like your God of War, your Last of Us, your Ghost. It's like, so it's so nice to just have a breath of fresh air right. and feel like a kid again yeah, and just uh, play this game. You, you said that and it didn't make it into the edit because the edit on uh, the Astros video was just like so difficult to like construct and everything. But I love that point so much. Let's have some fun. Video games can be fun. This game is so much fun. It needs to be fucking put on a pedestal for being fucking fun. Right. You have a little alpha alpha. Oh, okay. On? Yeah. <laughs> like, huh? uh, uh, Connor was giving me a look. Man. I don't even know. Yeah. I think it's too late. Oh, oh no, there, no, there, I got there, it. Yeah, I got you it. got it. Nice. <laughs> <Incredible>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> next up, we have Lego Horizon Adventures. There isn't a ton to say on this, and we are going along now, so I'm gonna just kind of, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna kind of just rip through this. Yeah, you go. Excellent humor. If you have seen the Lego movies, you're you know exactly what I'm talking about. We were chuckling the entire time. Were we laughing out loud? No, but we just were having a blast, just being like, "That's cute, that's cute." Ashley Birch returns as Aloy, and she's having a blast in the booth. You can tell. Yeah. Um, there's this base building aspect where you go back to your base camp and you can like, like put a fucking roller coaster on top of one of the buildings and like change your character's outfits and everything. Um, there's just some, there's just a great level of whimsicality when it comes to this game. There's like a ability where you saw him in the, in the trailer where it's a, it's a hot dog man and he like will pop up a hot dog stand and throw like hot dog bombs or whatever. Yeah. Brady accidentally used it before we could use it in the fight. I was so, so excited, dude. She was like, why'd you drop it? I was like, I was like, it's excited. <laughs> hot so, dog man. So, but you have your basic, your, what you come to know for horizon. You're scanning the, the robot dinosaurs and finding their weak points, shooting off their weak points. You can like shoot arrows through fire to, to do fire damage there's like different RPG elements where if you use certain abilities, you'll like level up and unlock new things. Um, there's like variety when it comes to the power ups and everything. So I think this game is a ton of fun. I was not sold on it based off of the trailer. I am going to check this out and it's definitely going to be a Laura and I game mm -hmm. later this year. And this makes sense for what PlayStation is doing and like why they're doing it. If you want to get a younger audience in and get the new generation of, of gamers to be interested in PlayStation, be interested in Horizon. This is the way to do it. Yep. And I think it's it's smart. Horizon being a tier-rated game is not extremely accessible for younger people, and it is probably the most readily accessible for their big AAA franchises at right now to like get people in the door. Like you can't get kids into The Last of Us. Give me the Lego <laughs> Last of Us. Too. Yeah. yeah. Lego, <laughs> give me Lego Bloodborne, somebody said. Uh, I mean honestly. That's, that's the only fun. chance that Bloodborne's gonna have to yeah. get any fucking remastered. So it's yeah. cool. Like you can get people in on this and into the story of Horizon and then maybe we'll go check out the full game. So uh, oh, yeah. I just want to say before this demo, I would not have been like, we're gonna play this. After this demo I think all of us were like, yeah, yeah we're yeah. gonna probably give it a run. And it's on Switch too. Don't forget that. Next up, I went hands-on with the first game from Blumhouse Games, Fear the Spotlight, inspired by PS1-era Resident Evil and Silent Hill-type games when it comes to its atmosphere and its adventure game aspects. No combat, no shooty-shooties, but you're you're getting keys, you're getting specific items to progress the story and, and doing little puzzles uh, like that to try to move on and, and get more of that story super atmospheric follows two girls sneaking into a school where the school pr previously had a fire where a bunch of people died so of course like it's, it's haunted um they're getting a, a ouija board they call it a spirit board and they're they're going to communicate with the the undead um vivian is like the main character that you're playing as she's like a nerdy like library girl uh and i say library girl because she's like the library like employee of the month on the wall and then uh amy is like this goth like cool girl or whatever so like they're like complete opposite friends or whatever, yeah. um, which was like a cool little dynamic. But they go in, they use the spirit board naturally. Things go awry. Things start to, to get weird. Once things started to get weird, I was like, fuck, this is scary. <laughs> like this, I was, I was on the edge of my seat, very atmospheric, very dark, very like stressful and made me very anxious, but like in, in a good way. 
the art style is very 90s it has like this like film grain over it that like kind of makes it look like it's like in a vhs is uh how it was put to me mm -hmm. and apparently you can turn that off if you don't like it but i thought that was super cool right. the the character design like they look like little dolls um like like wooden dolls which is kind of like interesting and different but like everything about this game i thought was super impressive the music the visuals the art design the gameplay the way that everything is structured the story the atmosphere i loved all of this i think bloomhouse blumhouse however you say it is coming out strong this is coming out in fall i cannot wait for this game if not for phantom blade zero i think this would be my biggest surprise of the show nice. i think this game is fucking awesome like i cannot wait to play it i don't know how long it is i hope it's like a shorter like tight experience but if it's like a 10 hour type deal where you're just like because things get fucking crazy, and I was hooked. I was like, I am excited to see where the story is going. Keep this one on your radar for sure. Be the spotlight later this year in the fall, they said. For so. sure. Next up, uh, we're just rapid firing through this. Yeah. I played yeah. UFO 50, which is another Day of the Devs game where it's 50 individual games inspired by the NES that go from like primitive to to more modern in in quotes because it goes from 1980 to like 1989 so like 80s based games wait 19 19, 19, 19 1989 it's sorry okay whatever. <laughs> had to but Nick, nick's like we're running late on time and he's, he's like <laughs> Carter, time to i'm sing. getting fucking wild okay <laughs> we're riding the lightning still <laughs> oh, we have <laughs> so much content we still have to we're shoot doing fine. he has to he has a dinner i don't, yeah, have, a dinner. I don't have a time yeah. as long as it's not late all right, <laughs> it might and be then <laughs> uh, UFO <laughs> 50. My dad's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> UFO 50, uh, 50 games, primitive to more complicated. It's weird. There's a ton of weird, like, mini games in here. The first one I played was, like, this really primitive platformer that I didn't fully understand what I was supposed to be doing, uh, which is very nes era games or whatever so there's that there was one where you're you're charging up a walrus to like launch him to like other platforms and like land on it so that was kind of weird then there's uh one where it's like a samurai pong where you're you're two samurais on each side and you're and you're launching like an onion back and forth i think is what it was, <laughs> Wait, so it was an onion? To, i watched to, you do to that try one, to score yeah. on each other there is some uh competitive modes where you can play with two players i assume that's one of them and then there was like a full-on like western themed like cowboy jrpg type deal like so i think there's like total there's totally like different levels of like how complicated and how deep some of these are i don't know if this is my kind of game mm -hmm. just based off of the ones that i played i wish there was a little bit more depth to each of them or there was less depth to all of them if that makes sense it's like i would rather them just like focus in on like certain ones to be like this is gonna be the ones that people come back to and like mm -hmm. kind of flesh it out a little bit rather than just be like kind of half-ass and uh, not that like go halfway with all of them, right. yeah. all right. of them if that makes mm -hmm. sense not that they're they're oh. half-assing on per or whatever like i i don't want to knock the developer or anything but like it's just one of the situations where it's like i i felt something to be desired here yeah gotcha. uh, my, my question for you is like th this sounds minigame-esque warrior wear is the thing that comes to my mind first no. and foremost is, is there <laughs> not moments that can be created like when you're playing a warrior where with the mini games that like you have the laughs or you have the back and forth i don't think so just based on the one competitive one that i played or the one that can be played competitive it's pong so yeah. like yeah no. are they all are they all single player games or are there co there's 20 uh competitive ones and then there's 50 gotcha non-competitive nice. so 20 of the 50 can be gotcha. played with two people okay and then the rest of them are or just you can play on, on your own. Cool. So that was kind of cool. I like the aesthetic and I like the idea. I just don't know if it it delivers the goods, if that makes sense. Yeah. So next up, Nick played After Love EP. Is this it? Nope, I have one more after oh, this. Oh, geez. Yeah, this uh, game destroyed me. Um, this <laughs> uh, The dev, uh, we were, this is like how we close out the weekend and everything. And so the there wasn't like appointments that I had to roll into or anything. I was just able to sit and play this game and the dev behind me just was like you played more of this than anyone else has this weekend and i'm like dude i i would fucking you you could you can leave like i'll be here all night if you let me like i will beat this entire fucking right. game tonight if i can um it is a narrative driven rhythm game uh where uh it tragedy strikes immediately and for me and just i'm not like i was exhausted not a lot of sleep I didn't fully like sit down and like look at the art that was happening. I went into it pretty gosh darn blind and I got fucking rocked. I was oh, like on the verge of tears, like 
legitimately for a long stretch of this time. And I think that part of me was, uh, it's funny. We, I had an appointment that got canceled. So I had this feeling of grief within me. And then this game just is like fucking, yeah, we're dumping <laughs> it on thick now. Like, it, it, and it really resonated with me. I think that this is definitively the most shocking game I played. Cause it was something that I didn't know about. I got interested in it and it just kept on begging for me to be curious with the story and the way that it's told is extremely interesting. It's very much like the reason I want to play this is I want to know what's happening with the narrative, but there are the moments where it is uh, a rhythm game because the main character is in a band and that it is real simple. So uh, what is the, what is the rhythm aspects of it? it? Is it like guitar hero? It, it is kind of, you know, it, for me, I was on mouse and keyboard and it would be the, the WASDs up, down, left, right. And there would be uh, things like coming in and you would have to hit the notes on beat and mm-hmm. hold certain ones down. Not hard at all. As someone that like plays rhythm games and plays music, like really basic. I- I'm perfecting most of them at when these songs happen. But the coolest part is the balance of song to narrative. Whenever I was like, oh, it would kind of be nice to like get another like song moment. Boom, it would happen. Nice. Uh, and then I would be like, all right, like I want uh, the song finished. I'm like, okay, like because it's so basic, but it's like still fun and interesting. I want to get back to the narrative and then the narrative stretch would be at a perfect length. I played about 30 minutes. It's going to be a shorter game. It's something that I 100% will get to when it comes out this year. I was blown away. I cannot like this. was my most shocking game. It was also the game that I made me just be like, video games are so cool that we can have a weekend where we play something like Phantom Blade Zero and it, or Astro Bot or like see Monster Hunter Wilds and then have something like this that is so small absolutely put me in an emotional throw in the way that it did. It's terrific. I, I'm very excited for this one. I yeah. know very little about this game, next to nothing about this game, but you've sold it. Yeah. I, I was like, it's awesome. awesome. I'm in. Yeah, fucking I'm fucking in. Wish list this one. Yeah. Please, like, support this game. I've, like, I, I, I will preach this one as much as I possibly can. It's great. Put it on your radar. If you're someone that likes cutesy games, like, really, like, uh, comforting and, like, lovely games, the themes are not that, but the art in the way that it is delivered and packaged is that. Yeah. But the themes are so fucking good immediately that I'm all in. Uh, take, take it home. Game of the year. I'm What's kidding. The, game like, of the year 2024. Yeah. What's the title again? Uh, uh, After Love EP. EP. Mm. An EP oh, like music. That's so, dude, I dude, like that. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sold. I really want to hop into this. Yeah. I wish I, I took the chance and uh, played it when I was there. I just didn't have time. Yeah. The, like We were jam-packed to have a moment at the end of the day where like I was not supposed to be able to play this game. Right. And the fact that uh, the, an appointment got canceled, and now I was all of a sudden I had some time, and Connor's like, "All right, like let, let's try to get in on Day of the Devs to sit down." And initially they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna like move you around and like stuff. Like you're gonna play a couple things." I didn't play anything else. Yeah. I didn't, and I didn't fucking care. Like I, it's all I wanted to do. I sat down to play my last game or whatever, and I was like, "Whenever he gets up, uh, just throw him on something else." And you just never got up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like. I was like, "I'm closing this. Uh, I'll, uh, fuck it. I'll go for an hour and a half. Like, <laughs> <laughs> close uh, this down." Last game that I played, uh, Phoenix Springs, is a point-and-click adventure game focusing on this uh, this woman detective type character. I think her name is Iris. She's looking for her brother. This game aesthetically is fucking rad the way that the allies put it i think is the best way to put it and i've not thought of a better way to do it so i'm just gonna totally take what they said it's like somebody took a children's book like like the giving tree or something like that and just like photocopied it and then photocopied it again and then photocopied it again and it looks fucking awesome dude and then when it comes to like the noir futuristic setting like very atmospheric drew me in immediately made me want to just be in this world with the colors and and like the sound and and all of that but it has those sensibilities of like early point click adventure games like sam and max is what i thought of or (laughs) strong bad's cool game for attractive people (laughs) um like but very serious very noir-esque the voice acting is top notch i'm in love with this character already and i only got to spend 10 minutes with her i just want to see where the story is going you're going to different areas you're you're getting different clues to then be able to utilize to like talk to other people about those clues to progress the story if you like point click adventure games keep this one on your radar i think it is super cool and super interesting another one of the situations where it's like this is 
the why we get to do this or like the the thing that I love about getting to do this, I love getting to talk about Astrobot and I love getting to talk about Lego Horizon and Monster in the Wilds and Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, but like the smaller games like UFO 50, Fear the Spotlight, Phoenix Springs, After Love EP, like these are the games that I'm like, dude, like this is fucking cool. Yeah. Like, that we get to put some of these on your radar and like get you guys to get excited about them because I'm I'm not even a huge point click adventure guy, but like I'm going to check this out because I just really do appreciate what it's going for, the art style, Almost everything about it, I'm really in on. Um, so, nice. it, for the allies, that that was Isla's game of the show, right? Yeah, that, that, she, that said, she said she loved it. Yeah, yeah. which uh, like that's, she, that's... she went Goaty, and then, <laughs> and then, and then uh, Huber and Isla for uh, Fear the Spotlight both went Goaty. Like, it's, it's gonna be I fucking awesome. So I was like, I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. I was stoked that the guy for Fear the Spotlight, uh, the Bloomhouse guy, like we, he was like check in at this time, and then he was like maybe at the end of like everything check in again. We checked in like four times, I yep. feel like, and he was like, I got you right now or whatever. Yeah, like, and and was, like, yes, it yes. got it. It was the point like we all Saturday and all Sunday just kept on like being like, hey, do you guys spot? And he's like, nope. And we're like, cool. I it got to the point that this guy's like, these fucking dudes <laughs> just really <laughs> want to play this game. All right, and I, I and thank I felt God. bad, but he was so nice. About so it. Nice. He was very he was nice. So nice, yeah. like. Oh my gosh! He was it, like, it, "Come back tomorrow at this time because I'll be here." Yeah, yeah. And he he was very kind, and the fact that we were able to get in it is awesome. So this was a quick forty-five minute pod. We still have a draft we got to do. How long, How long are we? Uh, we're at like on the recording like, an hour forty. So <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Should really? we do? Are we do we want to do the draft next pod or we want to? No, 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 we, we got to do it for TikTok. We got to do draft for TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's oh do it. Already, uh, gosh. Uh, do you want me to intro it and then throw it to Brady? Sure. I don't know why I turned into Goofy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Alrighty. I like that it's also a nice, easy draft. Like, we're not, like, talking about, like, the one of the greatest console runs right. ever. Ready? Good, 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 good. Wait. Now I'm good. Today, we are drafting PlayStation 3 games. We did one of these recently. But this is the console that we all three of us grew up on because we got Brady here today with us. Brady's going to be joining us. Nick, Brady, Connor, Brady, you're kicking it off. What is your first pick of the PlayStation 3 game draft? Uh, I've only done a couple drafts here, but this has got to be the easiest first pick I've ever had. It's my favorite game in my entire life. I love it. Dear, near and dear to my heart. Give me this shirt. Take it off. I'm going The Last of Us. First <laughs> pick overall. No, no, nothing else needed. Yeah, just take, uh, yeah. It's, it's, take it to the bank. It's my second favorite game. I love it. I want it. You have the next pick. No, you got the next pick. Cool. Shit. I don't want the next pick. I want. <laughs> I want the snake. Um, <laughs> snake. Snake. Eater. I mean, uh, normally I, I try to garner votes. Normally I try to get like the people on my side. I'm not really doing that with this next pick. I'm choosing the personal one. When I think of the PS3, I think of one man. I think of Nathan Drake. I think of Uncharted 2. Uh, the set pieces are epic. Connor, you can take your pick of the litter of the GTAs if you want. But like, I cannot let Uncharted 2 go off my board. It's probably the game that got me the most into video games. Uh, it is epic. It is the thing that, in my opinion, set the bar of what a action set piece is in the modern generation. Very influential. Love it. Uncharted 2 is my first pick. I'm going to go with my second favorite game of all time for my first overall pick. We're going to go with Mass Effect 2. Excellent characters, excellent combat, great RPG mechanics, excellent story, visuals, all of it just took the series to the next level. One of the greatest games of all time. Mass Effect 2 with my first pick. Second pick, I will play into Nick's hand here and go with Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico Bellic, the greatest... GTA protagonist of all time, just a man on a mission wanting to escape from his past and just keeps getting dragged back in. Great combat. Love the world. Um, love the story. That's the most important part. I love the story of Nico Bellic. It's dark but funny at the same time. It actually has something to say, and I think that's a problem with many GTA games that they get caught up in the silliness of it all, whereas GTA 4 balances it perfectly. So GTA 4 with my second pick. I'll take GTA 5. Cause duh, I'm not a moron in this in this circumstance. Uh, it, it would, if they were the first pick, the fact that it is here at pick number five for me is ridiculous. And I understand your love for GTA Four and like Mass Effect Two is one of the best games ever, but GTA Five is legitimately arguably the best game ever, and people still play it to this day. GTA Online's ridiculous. 
GT5, absolutely terrific. One of the most fun, energetic stories out there. It is a, the complete wild ride that, man, oh man, nobody should do this in real life. So let's just put it in a fucking video game. GT5 was my second pick. First thing I voted for for most overrated games. GTA. GTA 5. I like sent it to Connor and be like, can you make sure this works? And then I looked at his answers and I was like, oh, <laughs> what? Wild. So, so wild. <laughs> it's I, I love great. It. Is it like the best game ever? No. And what you're able to do in that game still in 2024, the sandbox is so much fun. I, I still like would love to. We, if we want to grab some pizzas and boot up GTA 5 this afternoon, I'd, I'd be all in. Yeah, I'd be in. All right. With my second pick in the PlayStation draft, PlayStation 3 draft, like you said, you, I usually go for the people when I pick some of my games. Like, I go half heart, half try to get the people on my side. But we're going PS3 draft today, which that has my entire heart. So I have to go with my heart on this. There's a lot of good options here. But I'm going to rip this one from underneath Connor because I bet he thought he was going to get this. I'm going to go the Walking Dead Telltale wow. series with yeah. my second pick. Why I, not? Why I not actually, us? I actually don't have it on my list because I have The Wolf Among Us over it. That's fair. Yeah. No, yeah, that's 100% fair. But yeah, I'm sticking with that pick. I I feel confident. I think even when it comes back around to me, I'll still have amazing picks that I feel so many good pieces heavy games. that I feel heavy for. So uh, I'm confident. You have another pick. Oh oh, <laughs> hello. Oh, I'm even more <laughs> confident now. All right. Uh, it's easy to go like with your heart and the people with the PS3 because it's all the same for me. Like I love so many of these games, and I've got my Walking Dead. I've got The Last of Us. Don't do it to me, Brady. Let me have it. I want it. I don't, don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, no. What am I going to do? All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm panicking. I'm I'm doing it. I'm going with my heart this time. I'm not doing it for the people. I'm doing this for me. I'm taking PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Yeah. I don't care. I win. This is my team. <laughs> I, um, game, dude. <laughs> I fucked up. Yeah. I'm going to be 100% honest. I have a title on the PS3. Uh, the Last of Us is a masterpiece for me. That's a 10 out of 10. Uh, there are so few games that are masterpieces, let alone what I believe to be perfection. Like, there is just, it's flawless. And this next game that I'm picking is perfection. It is a masterpiece. It is a 10 out of 10. It is flawless. I'm picking Portal 2. Wow. That's not what I thought you were going to say, yeah. but I respect it. I respect I it. It's one, it's one of my 10s, and I, I like GTA and Uncharted 2 for me are not 10. So, uh, like, personally, Portal 2, I think, has an argument to be the greatest game ever because it. I don't think there's a flaw, and it is so much fucking fun. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dude, this is so tough because I, I think that there's so many games that I could, like, get at the turn, like, or when it comes all the way back to me, but I want variety is another thing, like, I have third person action games like as all of mine. Uh with my third pick, I want to pick Infamous 2. Just one of the greatest superhero games of all time. So underrated. Nick is shaking his I will head. Not the slander. He I will not take know. the infamous slander. He doesn't even know. This board, dude, there's so much talent on the board that you're not taking. Yeah, infamous like, 2, is, 2 is like a top five PS3 game. There's Bioshock, dude. There's Modern Warfare. Like, what are you modern talking about? Modern Warfare? When you think PS3, though, you don't necessarily think Bioshock. I, I almost feel uncomfortable picking Mass Effect 2 because it's like, so that's, a, that's Xbox. an Xbox game. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, but, but for PlayStation, PlayStation, PS3, you think Infamous. So we're going to go with Infamous 2 with my third pick. And we're going to stick in the PlayStation wheelhouse, get weird here, get a little creative, create some levels. With my fourth pick, we're picking Little Big Planet 2, baby. Dude, this game, I sunk so many hours into it. Single player, online, co op, playing other people's levels, creating my own levels, make another Little Big Planet and actually do it right, Media Molecule. Give it to me. Little Big Planet 2 with my fourth pick. Nice. Who's pick? Nick? It's it's mine. I like, I I said Bioshock out loud, so I feel like I have to pick it. Do it. Can you? <laughs> but I'm gonna go with a personal pick. I'm gonna not pick Bioshock. If Brady wants it, you can have literally one of the best games ever. I'm gonna choose Black Ops Two with my next pick. Are you kidding me? Let me just say say some words. Paint a little word picture for you. Hijacked, buried, raid, origins. Mob of the Dead, some of the greatest multiplayer and zombies maps ever constructed. BO2 did the damn thing, and it is one of the greatest games of all time. 
I just that's so Raven had a memory flashback while you were saying that back to the Black Ops Two days. Like, I mean, it's a great yeah, that's a great game. I mean, I I respect you going with your heart. I have it on my list. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah it's a, it's one of the best Call of Duties in my opinion. So this maybe, is maybe not my favorite, but it's it's one of the best, and we had the most fun. It, on, it's probably, a very so. interesting thing where like people ask pretty often, "Will you ever do top 50? I don't think I ever will, but I do think about what is in my top fifty. If you were like really put me on it and like you have to decide what game like disappears from existence of your memory and like the world black ops 2 and bioshock i would have a panic attack like (laughs) i fucking adore both of those games and so i'm going black ops 2 today cool there's a lot of great games still left. Do, do you have this, two picks here? He does. I have two picks here. I thought here. I was going to be able to get PlayStation All-Stars with the last pick. I'm so I, mad you picked me too. third. <laughs> dude, I, I was thinking I that too. It, I was like, I could probably get this later, but it's like, I'm, I have to stick with my gut. I'm going heart, all heart today. Uh, yeah, I did pick PlayStation All-Stars last and before that, The Walking Dead. Let me reel the people back in a little bit with this fourth pick. I'm going to go with Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. Kind of reel in the, the crowd. I got variety on my team and... I get to move on to my fifth and final yeah. pick, right? Hmm. A lot to choose from here. I could go Bioshock, but I, I'm not like a huge Bioshock boy, so I can't like, I don't want to fake it. Like, pick I, with your heart, man. Yeah, I got to pick with my heart. I'm gonna, Connor I'm might get pick, Bioshock with his last yeah, pick. I'm, I'm going to pick it. PlayStation All-Stars again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, for my fifth and final pick of this PS3 draft, I think I'm going to go with, oh man, I might panic last second. He's switching it up. To yourself back up. Okay. Just for Jay. Hi, Jay. A lot of good options. A lot of good options. Jay has to watch an hour and 50 minutes. (laughs) Oh, I feel so bad for him. All right. uh, Yeah, let's roll it back in. For my fifth and final pick of this PS3 draft, I think I'm going to go Journey. Maybe one of the most wholesome, cutest games that I've ever played. Great indie. Maybe Great indie. Great indie. I've got a wild list. This yeah. is not what people are expecting from me, I'm sure, but I'm. So, this is my list. I'm yeah. so happy with this list. If that's the games that you're playing on your PS3, that that yeah. makes sense for for Brady. Um, I'm gonna do something wild. I think that you guys are about to lose your mind because I'm going for the people with this last pick. Not picking Bioshock. Mm-hmm. I could pick something like fucking Rock Band, one of my all time favorite games. Greatest set list in any uh, any rhythm game ever. Not going to do that. I'm going for the people. With my final pick of the PlayStation 3 draft, I'm going to choose one of the greatest open world games of all time. I'm on the edge of my seat. Skyrim. Amazing soundtrack. An in-depth world that people still love to explore. It's almost like Minecraft where people have their two weeks of Skyrim. Skyrim is epic. It is grandiose. Their music is top 10 soundtracks within gaming, maybe soundtracks within anything. We do discuss uh, the combat being lackluster. It doesn't matter when you have world building that good. It does not matter. Skyrim Preset. You're pandering so hard, dude. dude. That, you, you were supposed to go with your heart, dude. The, you you Scott, you slander Skyrim all the time, and now you're just trying to get the people on your side. Don't, don't listen to him. About. Keep this in. Don't listen to him. He's a liar. I don't dude, know what he's talking about. it ran at 14 frames per second on PS3, too. Like, he's it a was broken. Yeah, no, on no, one of the greatest games of all time. All right. Yeah, way to take your heart out of it. <laughs> <laughs> way, to, way to sell your soul yeah, way to, to sell Skyrim. Your soul to Skyrim. <laughs> There's so many great options here for me to go with but in since i'm the last pick i'm just going to shout out a few of them we have resistance 3 we have hotline miami dead space 2 bioshock god of war 3 heavy rain the wolf among us but i want some variety on my team you know what i'm saying i got i got a lot of third person action games uh shooty shooty games so we're gonna go with some jrpg flair we're gonna go with nino cooney wrath of the white witch a level five in studio ghibli collaboration one of the saddest games i've ever played one of the most grand games i've ever played and magical having that studio ghibli flair and and art design and whimsicality to the world and being able to play through that like is just so next level it's a match made in heaven nino cooney with my final pick Oh, what a game, dude. Just what a game. What I a remember thrill. telling Brady about Nino Cooney when uh, I was younger, <laughs> like when we were in high school, and he was like, what is he? What are you <laughs> You're just making words up right now. That's not real. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's my final Ooh. pick. Um, I have a few games I want to shout out for honorable mentions. Uh, like Connor, Connor had a great listing off. Arkham City. 
Mm-hmm. The, the yeah. Batman games, like that, yeah. that's obviously like very much. And then there, I'm shocked that neither of you guys picked more Call of Duty. Call of Duty on the on the PS3 is so awesome. Like BO1, BO2, um, the entire Modern Warfare series, like it's as good as it gets when it comes to first person shooters. Um, and then uh, Rock Band, Borderlands 2, Fallout 3. Yeah. Fallout 3 was in high consideration for that last pick for me also. New Think, Vegas. But, well, I know. I, for me, though, I've only played three. So, like, it's the only one yeah, that I care yeah. about it remotely. And then uh, Limbo. Limbo I, I, I was, I was gonna, That was going to yeah. be my one. The, mission, I, yeah. I was like, I want to go indie. I want to get an indie in there. When you pick Journey, I was like, I, I don't think I can let Limbo overtake something right. like Skyrim or Bioshock. The fact that we went 15 picks and didn't select Bioshock, which in my, like, Rolodex of games that we talk about on this podcast, I think Bioshock might be the most yeah. because, of, like, I fucking love it and the story's terrific and great gameplay and everything with atmospheric. The fact that we didn't pick it just shows how much of a powerhouse the PS3 is. All right, uh, we can end this. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Let's go another hour. That was your casual gaming conversation for this week. Uh, be sure to follow us on the Twitch, throw us a follow on here, subscribe or whatever. Uh, join the Discord if you haven't, and we'll see you next week. Peace out.